Hiya darlings! This is Hello Live English Advents Devilish Diva, the one and only Narissa Ravencroft! Hello, 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 hello! How's it going? How are we hanging, jailbirds? <laughs> I'm having quite the morning. And uh, by quite the morning, I mean my day's been good, but I have one complaint, and I'm gonna make it your guys' problem to hear about it. <laughs> What's for lunch? So I actually... You guys know I just got back from seeing Kiwawa not too long ago. I've been readjusting back, trying to <laughs> get into this time schedule. Um, I managed to not take a nap yesterday, so I managed to sleep at a normal time yesterday at, I think, 11 p.m. And I managed to wake up at 7 a.m., which is not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> yeah, duh! I slept through the night <laughs> but because of that so as you guys know I do intermittent fasting right so basically with intermittent fasting what I like to do is I usually don't start eating until 11 but the reason for that was because I usually don't wake up till 10 30 <laughs> so um and then, but, but my main, my main rule that I like to stick by is that I stop eating at five. And the reason I do that isn't because I'm like, oh, I'm on some diet, blah, blah, blah. It's because if I eat after 5 p.m., I cannot sleep because I get a, a tummy ache. <laughs> so I'm so used to being hungry. The moment I wake up, I wake up, I open my eyes into the world and I'm like, mm, hungry. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I woke up and I tried to wait a little bit, but I think around 8, 8.30ish, I ended up giving in and just being like, I don't need to wait till 11. <laughs> I can eat now. It's fine. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Like, it's whatever. So, uh, I went ahead and you guys know I started a meal order service. Uh, it was good. It was good today. Um, that's not the issue. So, it was fine. Uh, honestly... I felt like the meal that I had today wasn't my favorite. Uh, honest, it, I was I was a little disappointed. You know, it, it I felt like it was under seasoned. It was like a, a chicken pot pie pasta, I think. Thanks for streaming on my birthday race. Happy birthday! Um, but yeah, it was chicken pot pie pasta or something. And like usually, I really like having broccoli or cauliflower as a side. But I just felt like there wasn't, like, usually they have, like, a really nice, like, butter on top of it. But there, like, wasn't. It just felt very bland. And it's like, yes, I can season it myself. But especially since it's my first time trying them, I like to just try them as they are. I actually did, I think, the one I ate yesterday or two days ago. Um, I did end up actually adding lime and eating it on a tortilla because I took a bite of it and I was like, this is super mid, but... I know what would make this better, but like, you know, just adding salt and pepper, I'm like, mm, I could do that, <laughs> but why would I, you know, like, y y you know, anyway, um, mm. I had some leftovers from yesterday because I decided to order pizza for my family. It wasn't pizza that was left over. It was uh, like little chicken, little like boneless chicken wings quote-unquote chicken wings when they're boneless <laughs> so I ate that uh with honey mustard sauce I cut one up for my dog because she my dog is so beautiful and she's like so perfectly healthy which pisses me off because she is such a bitch when it comes to eating <laughs> she will hop up on the table and steal food if no one is there and if it is within her reach. She is just crazy, okay? This this dog, I've had a whole plate of brownies. And you think she should be dead after eating them. After stealing them off the counter. But she's fine. No throwing up, nothing. I don't know how this dog is still alive, to be honest. But that's beside the point. <laughs> she, however, has one thing she will not eat. Ever. One thing she will not eat. She'll eat anything, but there's one thing she won't eat, and that is her dog kibble. 
Even even if you get her like the fresh dog food, you know how they sell like the the like fresh one. Um, she won't eat that either. Any dog food, she's like, nah, no, not for me. I need real, I need real dog food, <laughs> like which is human food to her. So she's very, she's picky. She's picky is all I'm trying to say. My picky little baby girl doggy woggy, a woof woof, you know? So, training issue? Yes, my parents did not train her at all. She only likes human food. She is spoiled. So the way we have to convince her to eat is by sprinkling something over top of her food. Um... So yesterday, it was a Ritz cracker. We got one single Ritz cracker and she was so convinced. She's like, God, I just know that Ritz cracker is going to be the best thing in the world. So <laughs> my brother um, literally just, you know, crushed it within his hands and then put it over the dog food. And then she ate all the dog food. She was like, oh, gourmet, gourmet. Oh, my God. So, um... I broke up one of the small chicken tenders and cut it up really small and then put it in her food and mixed it together so she would eat it. <laughs> Absolutely spoiled. And she's dumb. Like, she's like, oh yeah, Ritz cracker is going to be so much better than my kibble. Like, she's so crazy. Oh my God, she's barking. She can hear me. She's like, are you talking shit? Okay, but so uh, then I had some chocolate. Um... And I just, I have a really bad sweets craving this morning. So I decided I'd treat myself and get uh, a moo latte, a mocha moo latte from uh, the Dairy Queen. But for whatever reason, it's vanilla. There's no mocha in it. It's just vanilla, guys. I specifically like chocolate and I specifically wanted I specifically wanted mocha. <laughs> but I, I keep sipping it because it's still here. I got it like two minutes before the stream. It's vanilla. And don't get me wrong. I like vanilla. However, I don't like vanilla extract. And you guys know this by now. I used to work at a Dairy Queen. I don't care for vanilla extract. And I know that's what they use. Because I used to have to make these. Chocolate's bad for the dog? I know that. I don't feed my dog chocolate. She just steals it because you can't you can't tell a dog chocolate's not good for you and then have them go, Oh yeah, you're right. I shouldn't eat that. Thanks, owner. You say, here's chocolate. I put it so high on the counter she can't reach it. And she goes, Mmm. A challenge. <laughs> A challenge. Uh, mocha Melantes. It is just chocolate syrup, however. Um, the mocha flavoring is actually something called Cocoa Fudge. Um, which is uh, quite a bit different from just chocolate like syrup. Cocoa Fudge is like, it's this thicker consistency and it's got more of a, what's it called? It's got more of like a, a grittiness to it, I guess. So thicker and more like, oh god, whenever I go to Dairy Queen, usually I will actually get, um, just, just a sundae with just so much cocoa fudge. I always tell them, I'm like, give me so much cocoa fudge that you think that this will taste awful. A grittiness? I don't know how else to, like, if you tried it, I guarantee you, you'd know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I don't know how else to describe it, but I really like it. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'm like sipping on it, but I don't want it now because it doesn't, it doesn't have the cocoa fudge in it. It just has vanilla extract. I don't like vanilla extract. Like sandy, I mean, like, yeah, really, really fine sand, sort of. But like pleasant, like, I, it's not like an unpleasant texture. It's like a really, really good grittiness to it, you know? Mm. Grainy? I guess you could say that, too. But, like, it's not intentional. Like, this is like a smooth sauce. It's just really thick. But, again, there's just, like, this kind of grainy, gritty texture to it. <laughs> Pleasant sand? 
I hate sand. It's so sandy, it gets everywhere. It's not crunchy at all. Again, I you'd have to, like, have it, and then you would totally understand what I'm saying. Shadow Doko, look where my, my, my broken horn is. He's up there. Right at the tip of it. Hmm. Yeah, but um, I don't actually even like coffee, too, so that's another downside uh, to this is I ordered it specifically for the cocoa fudge that's in it because I have a cocoa fudge uh, addi addiction, um, but this has no cocoa fudge, so I'm just drinking vanilla, which I am not interested in, vanilla extract, and <laughs> uh, coffee, which I don't like, so... I've, I've made, I ruined, I single-handedly somehow had my morning ruined by getting an incorrect order. Mm. Mm. I can't eat this. Give me one sec. I'll be right back. I'm going to, I'm going to go palm this off on my brother. He must hear me complaining about it. Because <laughs> I just went and gave it to him and he said, mm, Grazie. And then went, wait, is that vanilla? <laughs> uh, I can hear her say, hey, loser. I didn't say anything. I silently set it down and started walking away. Because I'm so nice like that. Ah. <laughs> uh. He is watching. He must be. What else would he be doing? How else would he know to do that? Ooh. But yeah, so. You heard me say yeah. I, I, I'm I sure you did. Because <laughs> he asked me if it was vanilla. <laughs> nice, she says. Excuse me. He's a jailbird too. No. Don't be mistaken. I don't think he has any interest in what I do. Because um, he's told me very specifically he does not want to be involved and to keep him as far away from it as possible. Not quite that strong of wording, to be completely honest. <laughs> but yeah. Ugh. He's like, I don't want anything to do with it. Uh... <laughs> he's a hate watcher. Oh my god, you're right! He hate watches me. He's like, oh, my stupid sister. Look at her streaming. <laughs> Using up all the bandwidth so I can't play games. <laughs> That's my brother. Such a such a little brother thing, too. Ugh. He, wrote, he wrote those negative comments. I can't believe he's writing hate comments about me. Yeah, he's such an anti. <sighs> I I'm currently just chilling, you know. I'm relaxing. I'm having the time of my life cuz it's early and I'm streaming, which is very very different for me. I'm very not used to streaming until way later in the day. So this feels very weird. As you can see, it's light outside, you know? <laughs> Like, how weird is that? How weird is that? You're a thanks to actually you, you friendly. Yeah. Takanashi Kiara is gone, so. For a little bit. So I had to do one stream at EU friendly time. Hold down the fort. <laughs> yeah, some of you haven't seen this daytime BG. How do you feel? Do you like it? Seeing the sun streaming in through the windows. See, you, you can even see the little dust particles in the air. It's beautiful. <laughs> so lovely. I like the night more. Okay. That's why I stream at night. <laughs> I like both of them, of course. Vacuum your room. 
No. Oh, speaking of, I did, um, I did actually decide, uh, I think I told you guys this, but my room, I have like a little pantry area and I, cause there's no room for it in, in the kitchen pantry. Cause I live with so many damn people. So <laughs> I finally decided I was annoyed by it and I'm buying an actual thing to hold it in proper. So I'm, I'm quite excited for that to come in. And then I decided to buy some hand soaps, uh, like actual like physical bars. Because I, uh, I got gifted a few uh, not too long ago. And I was like, you know, I don't usually use, like, hand, hand bar soap. So I need one of those little, like, things to, like, let it drain. So I can actually open them up. So I got some of those, too. <laughs> CJ, thank you for the Aka Supa. Hi from work. I'd like to drop by to grab some will to work for my Oshi since work decided to be more hectic than usual today. I get some encouragement by just listening to your streams. I hope... Uh, it helps a lot, and I just want to see you, Risa. Thanks for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for the Akasupa. Good luck at work today. Thank you for choosing some time or taking some time to uh, run away and hang out with me instead. <laughs> <laughs> drink less coffee to sleep better. I actually don't drink coffee. The only reason I'm having something with coffee in it this morning is because I was craving the chocolate that I didn't get in it. So now I didn't even finish it. <laughs> oh, such a sad day. Like, I'm not going to order another one either just because they got it wrong. But they also, you know when, I feel like this happens way too often now where like your order is wrong and you tell them and like they just literally ignore it completely. I've had that happen so often. Like, I remember I ordered a, like, taco pack from Taco Baco. And, um, I ordered Supreme Tacos. And, like, it costs more money. So it's kind of a little bit of a, like, huh. <laughs> to get them all Supreme. But then they were all just normal, normal tacos. in the Taco Baco. And I, I sent an email. I wasn't angry or anything. But I was like, hey, could I get, like, a coupon code or something? <laughs> For like, or like a slight refund for the extra money. Um, and like, you know, it's, it's the email. It's the email. <laughs> and I didn't ever get a response. And I was like, oh, okay. Taco Baco. Yeah, that's sorry. That's what I call Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco outside the Baco. Tingle inside the bingle. You know. We have. I mean, I don't. I, I I've worked fast food before, so I I just don't have the capacity to like. I've actually gotten yelled at at by at at, at Taco Baco. Actually, I don't really like Taco Baco, or at least the one near me. I will specifically pick times of the day where I know for a fact it's not busy to go out and get food. Right. Especially if I'm ordering a lot. So there's one time I went through the drive through and I ordered the taco pack. They got me this taco pack, despite the fact that it's got like, I think like what, 16, some like, it's a lot of tacos in it. I don't remember how many. And the, the kid working the window literally turned to me and he's like, um, just so you know, if it were busy right now, this would have caused a huge a backup. So, like, next time, if you're going to order this much food, just come inside. And I was sitting there and I was like, bro, I ordered the taco pack. There's no one in front of me. There's no one in back of me. I purposely came at a time where no one is out to eat. Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> like, it would have been one thing if it was really busy. If there were a ton of cars in front of me and in back of me. Yeah, like, I would have been totally, like, all for him saying something and be like, hey, maybe next time if it's really busy, you see that you should come inside. It was not busy at all. There was no one. And I was just like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, I literally was just like, okay, I'll, I'll think, I'll, I'll consider that for next time. <laughs> <laughs> because again i'm i'm so used to it. i remember one time i when i was working at dairy queen it was really 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 obnoxiously busy okay because it's so hot in hell everyone wants ice cream 
you know? So you're coming through, it's just a non-stop stream of demons, and obviously demons are kind of awful sometimes. So there's this girl with a kid, with her, okay, waiting for their food, and the, the, the line is long, literally wrapping around the building. You can look at this line and deduce, I'm going to be here a long time and make the decision in your head, should I leave or should I stay in this line? <laughs> um, and for reference, we were also terribly understaffed, okay? Terribly understaffed. So, again, line is wrapping around the building. It's so bad. This lady decides to wait in line. By the time you actually order your food that you get to the window, it would go pretty fast from there. But, like, I get it. Hangry people. It happens. I get it. I've been there. I've gotten hangry before. Who hasn't? Sometimes you're just fucking hungry. Um, and this lady, she gets to the window. Her food is still being cooked because everyone's ordering food. Everyone's ordering ice cream. I have her ice cream ready. I take her payment and I let her know. I'm like, I'm so sorry for the wait, ma'am. Because, you know, everyone's been waiting. I know they're all waiting. So start off, you know, the right way. I'm so sorry for the wait. Um, your ice cream's ready. We're just waiting for your food for your kid's meal. It'll be up in just a moment. And she yells at me. She blows up and she says, you have terrible customer service. You guys are so awful. Do you know how long I've been waiting in line? I've been waiting in line for 20 minutes for this food. And I get to the window and my food is not ready. <laughs> what do you mean my food is not ready? You are awful. Your customer service here is so bad. And I'm just looking at this small child in the seat next to her. And I'm like, what is this child learning? Hearing her mom have a Karen moment. <laughs> and again, this whole time I'm just like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, again, I'm so sorry. I'm not the one cooking in the kitchen. We've, we have people in here. We have people outside. You know, it's a really long line. There's a lot of people. We're getting in as fast as we can. And again, just to that being like, You're, you guys are awful here. Awful customer service. Awful, awful. <laughs> and I'm, I'm playing it down a bit, but she was like yelling, like yelling at me. Um, so yeah i was i was a little like damn i need to get out of this job but you know as, as much as you have people like that you also have the people who make your day bright there was this guy who'd come in and he was like an old guy you know like a very very old guy and he'd always toss a caramel at you he'd always always come inside and he'd toss a caramel at you and he'd be like i'll have the usual <laughs> And then he'd like compliment you on something and then like he'd just sit and he'd eat it and like enjoy the day and then leave. It was so cute. Old guy with caramels. Classic. Exactly. So I would remember I I'd always like really enjoy the or like there's like this old couple too. And when I say old, I mean like 80, 80 years old. Okay. I'm not talking like old, like off oh, 50 year olds, 60. I'm talking like pr should probably like not be out unattended because if they fall it will be really bad <laughs> kind of old but there's this couple i remember there's this old couple that would always come in and they'd be so happy they were always arm in arm and smiling and they'd always order and then they'd sit at the table together and just be so happy and i was like ah. <laughs> it's so cute <laughs> Ah, uh, cute, cute old couple. This is make my day. They're always polite, too. I, I'll be honest. I get yelled at by, like, middle-aged people. I've never been yelled at by, like, really old people, though. <laughs> so. Also, CJ, thank you for the pinky. I'm not gonna stitch on you to your boss. Don't worry. <laughs> you asked for permission. Damn. Congratulations to you getting permission to watch streams on the clock. I mean, if it helps your product productivity, why not? Ugh, that's how they live so long. You're right. By being being polite and nice and just chill. <laughs> yes, I'm back. I had fun on my vacation. <clears throat> but I'm very glad to be home. <laughs> Very, very, very glad to... I washed my sheets yesterday, so that was great. Oh. Picture, thank you very much for the pinky. I say pop. 
we drink pop, but I don't, I don't I actually don't drink pop. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I do call it pop though. Sometimes I will say soda because honestly, I, you know, I, I grew up with everyone around me saying pop, but then obviously I feel like the majority of people say soda and honestly it gets really tired having the soda gang. Like, I don't care if you guys call it soda. I really don't like, but when people are constantly like, oh, you're saying it wrong. That's incorrect. Actually, it's like, it gets really, uh, <laughs> annoying to be honest. <laughs> So, again, I don't care personally. So, whenever... But but when people are, like, overly, like, make it, like, a, you know, me versus you type of thing and, like, oh, you're wrong, I'm like, bro, both are correct. Get over it. <laughs> so, sometimes I think I tried to train myself out of saying uh, pop and saying soda. So, occasionally I will say soda. Because I'm just, like, ugh. <laughs> uh... A soda pop. Just saying both. Yeah, it's a dialect. It's like when people call a cart at a store a buggy. You know, there's different options. <laughs> Where you said this matter is my whole identity. You should... I'm sorry. You should maybe find something else to identify with. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Sorry, I'm in pain today. I'm in pain. Please send help. <laughs> One sec. Uh. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. I just need some water. I'm just not hydrated. Mm. In pain? Am I okay? Yes. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. Don't worry. Mm. Ugh. But yeah, so... Oh, and for those of you who aren't members, who are here, um, I got my ASMR mic. For now, I'm going to only be using it on membership streams because uh, I'm not very good at ASMR yet. I pop the mic a lot, and <laughs> I need to get better at doing it first. But if ASMR is something that interests you, I'll be doing more membership streams that have that maybe as a thing that show up at some point. Or maybe ones that are specifically focused on ASMR. So please consider that. Um, ugh. <sighs> Do I say caramel or caramel? I saw someone say it's a similar situation. I say both. Never mind me. Thank you for the 50 gifted memberships to the community. <laughs> Simply thank you for the 10. I say caramel, but sometimes if I'm feeling fancy, I, I say caramel, you know? It depends on my mood. Like, how how am I feeling today? Do I feel like having caramel, or do I think I need a little caramel? <laughs> and Dragos, thank you for the five membi gifts. Caramelo. <laughs> eh? How do you pronounce pin and pen? Pen? I don't understand. I, I'm pretty sure those are universal. Eh? <laughs> caramel sounds fancier. I mean, caramel, mm, yeah. It does sound fancier. That's the whole thing. It sounds so fancy. Ugh. Pop, 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 pop. Excuse me. I yawning. See, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. I yawn. Pecan or pecan? It is, uh, obviously there's a correct answer and it's pecan. If you say pecan, though, that's fine. But, uh, I, I have only ever actually heard pecan in sane situations. So, just my opinion. <laughs> just my opinion. That's fine. Uh. <sighs> Don't be a hypocrite. Look, I just said. I've only ever actually met people who say pecan. 
I've never met anyone who says pecan. I'm sure some of you do, but I, I, I haven't heard you come up to me in a... I've never heard anyone in a sane situation be talking about pecans. I've never seen anyone just talk about pecans. No one has ever given me a pecan. No one has ever given me a pecan at the store. I have never bought a pecan. I have never... I've had pecan pie on the holidays with my family who all say pecan. <laughs> I've never... I've never in a social situation actually met anyone who says pecan. You want a pecan pie? <laughs> Pia can. Why are you guys spelling it like that? Yeah, just but look, the real the real tragedy is there are better nuts than pecans. Let's let's eat walnuts. Let's eat walnuts. I want walnut pie. I wonder how that would be. <laughs> Cashews, cashews are good too. Hazelnuts fuck so hard. Ugh, I would do anything for a fucking hazelnut right now. Anything. Ugh. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough about nuts. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I have going now. It's like... There's so much going on simultaneously. But because I just got back for vacation from, from vacation, excuse me, I'm like, yeah, everything's good. Everything is like so chill, you know? It's everything's fine. And then I'm like, no, 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 Narissa. You've got a lot of work to do. And I'm like, mm, no, it's good. I just need to fix my sleeping schedule. <laughs> yeah, I got a uh I've got Lots of things I need to do. <laughs> so that's actually why I'm streaming now instead of later tonight is because I actually have um, a meeting tonight. And uh, it's uh, I can't I can't tell, obviously, the things, but uh, lots of fun things are in the works, as is the case with everyone in Hollow Life. <laughs> but so idol meeting yeah an, an actual idol meeting <laughs> to decide your fate oh my god you're right Yago is going to be there and he's going to be like all right Narissa Ravencroft <laughs> now that you've been here for almost six months I'm going to decide what to do with you <laughs> perfect uh, also sorry I heard my cat snore and at first I thought maybe it was them hissing outside the door but then I remember they're both here on the bed Speaking of, I don't remember if it was only in a membership stream. I mentioned that I'm looking into adopting a cat later. Not not like anytime soon, but like sometime like later later. And I'm I sent in an application on the adoption form. And I know it's only what day of the week is it? It's only Tuesday. But I sent it like Wednesday or Thursday. And they haven't responded yet. They're like, we respond to all emails. And we, we, you need to send an application to find out that if you are a good candidate because of the kind of cat I want to adopt. <laughs> so they're like, you need to send in one. Um, and so I'm like, okay, I'm patiently waiting. And I'm like, Ooh. they're probably short staffed. I mean, it's, it's a breeder. So, and I think, I, I don't know what else I do, actually. <laughs> we respond to all customers, except to VTubers. Exactly. There's a lot of applications, don't worry. I don't know if there are. I'm going to be honest. I don't think there are. <laughs> I, I, not that I think there aren't a lot of applications, but I also don't think that right now there's that many. You know? Ugh, sorry, my pain. Ugh. I'm dying today. Breeder, not a shelter. So, uh, I want to quick clarify. I actually 
usually prefer shelter cats. Both of my cats were adopted from effectively one from a farm where they were abandoned as kittens. There was a ton of kittens abandoned and we got our eldest cat, who's I think 12-ish now. We got her from there and she's lived a very happy, wonderful life. And then the other cat who's about four uh, was about two years old when he was literally picked up off the streets. So I wanna be clear, I actually way prefer getting cats from a shelter or like from like an adoption like center where it's like, oh, like they don't have to be kittens. I don't think that's important, but <laughs> yeah, found exactly find the cat in the trash. This is my cat now. <laughs> Yeah, little lady and little man, they are—they were free cats. Um, however, little lady is my first experience with a cat. And she was a kitten when we got her. She was super duper young. Um, but she was a kitten, okay? So I, I have a thing for kittens specifically. And the issue is I do want this specific breed of cat. So my plan is I want to adopt this cat, but then I also want to find one in a shelter or in like one of those situations where it's probably not going to find a home as easy and then have two cats, have two cats, you know? So that way the cat has a companion, but then also it's important to find one um, that is able to work with other animals because as you guys know, I have a dog. I have two other cats already that are my sister's cats. I live with lots of people, so. <laughs> Only two cats? Yeah. I, I only think... I think it's important to give good care to animals, you know? And I can't have a dog because I know that I can't give enough care to a dog, you know? And the dog the dog that I currently have is my, the family dog. So it's technically like my parents, my grandmas, my brothers, and mine technically. But it's not my dog per se. <laughs> So I want cats, but at the same time, um, I also want to make sure that I can take care of the cats efficiently. So I'd get annoyed too much if I had to constantly clean out litter boxes because I had to have like eight everywhere, you know, for like a million cats. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of desiring to only have two so that way I can... It, have an easier time taking care of them. Potty training them won't be so hard, you know. Stuff like that is important. That's if they even go in their litter boxes. I've never had an issue with cats not going in their litter boxes unless they're super stressed. Then they'll pee on furniture. Oh, I want to get an automatic litter box, actually. But, um, obviously I want to have multiple of them. So if, like, for whatever reason there's somewhere else in the house, there is an alternative one that they can use. If, like, my door's closed or something. But, yeah. Ugh. So, that's that's currently what I've been up to. <laughs> currently, I'm struggling. <laughs> in a good way. In a, in a, it's good fun, but... Get Kiara's automatic litter box. Perfect. I'm going to go to her house, actually, and unplug it and just get on a plane and take it back with me. I will steal her litter box. <laughs> uh, how big is your house? I mean, look, this is the living room, and this is my personal living room. So. <laughs> and you guys have seen my kitchen? Wait, who puts litter boxes in their rooms? People who only have rooms to put their litter boxes in. When that's the place the cats sleep. I would prefer to not have a litter box in my room, though. <laughs> Do you have a swimming pool in the back? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> no. I wish. Uh, then again, I don't really swim, so... I mean, you guys have seen... Wait. Sorry, pretend... Pretend it's not nighttime. See that? In the far off corner? Do you see that building? That is the Ravencroft Manor, which is my parents' house. <laughs> also, yay, this background again! Isn't it so pretty? But yeah, that's... That's the castle. Big. Our house. Yeah, how do you think? Look, I have so many jailbirds. Where do you think you guys are all staying? In my giant ass house, of course. <laughs> and there's all that and no pool. No pool. Pools are too much upkeep. I thought it was a mountain with trees. No. 
Is there a villager on the castle? Um. No. Not really. I mean, eventually. Eventually you'll come upon one, but it's not like close by. It's, it's not, it's not quite like Resident Evil Village. <laughs> Demetrius' castle or anything. Uh, we are stored in the basement, help. No, you don't live in the basement. <laughs> don't worry about it. Wait, you're not Lady D. Excuse me! Do I look like Dimitrescu? Or Dimitresk, excuse me. I always call her incorrectly. Attic? Yeah. You guys are in the attic. <laughs> Does the manor have a usual room? No. I I don't I I guys, I would never. I would never. <laughs> Nurse with a big hat. I mean, I almost tricked you guys into thinking I had a big hat with this. I don't, I don't have a big hat, but I've, uh, wait, umbrellas indoors. They're bad luck. I can't do that. Can't be doing that shit. Now my luck is going to be so bad. Shit, shit, shit. Guys, help. Help me. <laughs> help me. You need to help me fix my luck, please. <laughs> you see the pic of you with Bibu bonnet? I did. Did you see my Twitter feed where I said that I got Bibu taxed because they they put that on me as well as the um the nook in my mouth? <laughs> Email response delayed again. No, please respond to my application. <laughs> I'll give you money. Just let me have a kitten. <gasps> she already missed me. Wait, I need to read that message. Are you telling the truth? Just wanted to let you know she already missed you. Also had an idea of a tattoo card. Dude, I fucking love tattoos. All the things she said, all the things she said, running through my head. Dude, I used to listen to tattoos so fucking much. I fucking love tattoos. She did? She missed you? It sounds like you guys are making things up. It sounds like you guys are actually just saying things. She mentioned she missed you, yeah. Did she really? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I missed all of Advent. Um, I felt really bad every time I'd see a collab happening. I'd get, like, major FOMO, even though, like, I'm in the Maldives with Kiara, and, you know, then we're at her house. <laughs> but I was like, hmm. My, my gen mates, what will I do without them? I can't go without hearing their voices for too long. So super glad when I could join that uh, Pal World collab. I was like, thank God. So, un or surprisingly, she did say she missed you. <laughs> See, I told you she's crazy about me. <laughs> uh, I'm dying. I'm in pain. It's okay, though. fine um what else is there i talk too fast <laughs> she said that advent was playing with the company to pay her ransom to kiana <laughs> was kiana holding me hostage uh, uh, any thoughts on uh, rpg streams um i don't know i haven't found another one that appeals to me I really like BG3. I would like to keep playing BG3, but because I stream and playing games is my job. Uh, yeah. Are you in the Dota Club? Yes! I actually, I forgot to put it on my schedule because um, I hadn't updated mine to show that the Advent Club is actually at a different time that day. But yes, look forward to, on Friday, Dota 2. <laughs> I haven't played Dota in forever ever but uh i was a templar assassin man when i used to play so uh yeah it's gonna be lots of fun how did bibu bibu no one needed to rope me in uh to playing dota 2 <laughs> i wanted to play dota i've been waiting to play a, a moba but um you know it's kind of hard because 
it's way better if you have a five team and like i just don't know a lot of girls who play dota or league like willingly you know <laughs> i feel like usually i try to like uh, ask people to play with me and then they're like oh i hate these games i'd never ever play or um like uh id does play league for example but because of the fact that you know like the different servers it might cause a lot of lag so we got so excited because me kyla and kobo were like League! <laughs> and then we're like oh wait <laughs> oh no <sighs> yeah maybe someday maybe someday it would be nice kyla and kobo too yeah for league for, for who else is in the Dota Club? I don't remember exactly who. So just wait. <laughs> but um, because I, I don't know if any of them who haven't announced it haven't announced it for a reason. If maybe they want it to be a surprise. Probably not. Because, you know, we've already announced it. And they obviously, obviously it doesn't matter. But please look forward to it. Yeah. You guys can probably assume some of or at least one of the other people who's going to be in it. Other than me and Bibu. Can't you? Hee hee hee. Did you see Pekoda's Terraria arc? Yeah, I did! I, I saw them all playing. It made me want to play Terraria again. I miss playing. I wish I could find people to consistently play Terraria with me. Who want to play. <laughs> want to play Terraria with me. <laughs> uh. But everyone's been really into PAL World, so I think I want to play PAL World. Want to join them? Yeah, a little bit. But I don't speak any Japanese, so I don't think they would uh, care to have <laughs> me bug them and be like, Can I play Terraria with you guys, senpai? <laughs> uh. Have you ever seen addicted to PAL World? Yeah, everyone seems pretty addicted to it. Use passion Japanese? <laughs> if only. Ugh. Ugh, I don't have good enough passion, I think. I think I, I can try, but I don't think it's good enough. You know what I mean? Power World, I think, I think it, it's a really amazing concept. And I think that's one of the reasons that it's taking off. Because people love ARC. And like, I don't know, honestly, I've missed all the Rust arcs. So I'm not quite sure what exactly Rust is. Don't be mad at me for that. But it seems kind of like Ark mixed with Pokemon. And, like, that just seems like, like, such a good concept in general. Like, people love to build shit. People love cute animals. People love using cute animals to fight and do stuff. You know, like, a uh, farm. You have all those aspects. It's great. And then apparently there's guns. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember there being guns. <laughs> In when we were playing, but maybe those come later, you know. People like capture, like ca huh? capturing people. Uh. So yeah, yeah. So lots to do. Lots happening. And then I uh. I've been wanting to downsize my wardrobe lately because I just have too many clothes I don't wear, which is, um, oh, sorry. It's kind of makes it difficult. <laughs> it kind of makes it difficult to find clothes to wear because there's so many I don't want to wear and haven't worn. But then I'm like, oh, but I don't want to throw them out because they were this or this or this is why I got them. But like, I'm like, I need to get rid of them. I need them gone. I need them out of my closet. I'd buy them. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh! <gasps> oh my god. Hey, wait, wait. Good news. Good, good, bad, but good news. So remember how the last, the, the very, very first time I started my meal order business, okay, I complained because I was like, I missed out on three meals and they didn't even bother to tell me. So I didn't expect to, to miss out on food. I actually did 
call them and make a report and uh, give them that advice. And uh, I think my food is... My next box is coming in tomorrow or the day after. They emailed me to tell me that because of a shortage of ingredients and such, that I will be missing out on my garlic herb salmon meal, which is fine by me because I only get the salmon because I have to eat fish, not because I want to. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! <laughs> and they gave me a credit for it, so that's nice. Yeah, they communicate. Do you not like fish? I like sushi, but I'm I'm more into like tuna. I'm not quite sure why, but for whatever reason, I'm just like really, really not fond of um salmon. I've tried it. I've had it cooked at like five star restaurants. I've cooked it at home. I've had other people cook it for me who are like, mm, I make a mean salmon. Like I've had salmon so many times. I always try it. Always, 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 I go out of my way to eat salmon. And no matter where I've ever had it, I've never, ever liked it. So, <laughs> I have so many people who, when I say that to them, they're like, you just haven't had it cooked right. It's just not cooked right. You just need to try it. I just need to cook it for you. <laughs> Which, if you want to cook me salmon, I will let you. Because I don't like salmon, but I need the omega-3s from it. So, I will eat it. <laughs> So by all means, if you are insistent that you will somehow make the magical salmon that will make me like salmon, by all means, come on over, cook me a salmon, you bring the fish meat and whatever ingredients you need, let's do it. But <laughs> uh, I don't, I just, I think I've mentioned this before, but the reason I don't particularly like salmon specifically is because it makes me, I feel like it gives me the impression it's, it's something about the texture about it that I just really don't like that makes me feel. It's because it's what my cat sounds like when they eat wet cat food. It's the, it's the, the sound of eating that cats make. So when I'm eating it, it gives me this feeling of I'm eating cat food. And then I get really turned off to the idea of eating it. And I'm just like not crazy about the flavor. So the fact that every single time I eat it... That is how I feel eating it. <laughs> I just I just can't do it. I just don't like it. I just I just dislike it. Even in sushi, I again I just don't like salmon. I like tuna. I like uh I like soft shell crab. I like uh ebby. I like um eel. I really like eel. I like beef, cooked beef sushi. <laughs> Tuna does not give me that feel, but I also don't ever eat cooked tuna, and I usually go for uh, toro or otoro tuna, so, which is like the really, really, really fatty tuna. Yeah, unagi, mmm, so good. Taco, uh, sadly, I wish I liked octopus, but I'm not a big fan of consuming otoro spoiled. I know, right? Only fish I'll eat is a walleye. Wow. That's a, a lake fish. Amazing. <laughs> I actually... I should have had walleye at least once. But I haven't had it. I, I just... I don't go out of my way to eat fish. Walleye best fish though. I'll have to try it at some point then. <laughs> takoyaki? Um, I've had takoyaki once in Japan. And then once at a, a, a place locally. And I really... I feel like in Japan I liked it. And thought it was okay. But then when I had it locally, it was not good. Mackerel? Okay, wait. If you have like... If you go to the local H-Mart. If you have an H-Mart. And they have like the, the cooked mackerel. And you buy that and you bring it back. And you like heat it up a little bit. That shit's so fucking good. I fucking love mackerel. <laughs> I love mackerel. Mackerel's so delicious. Yeah, I think it's broiled. I, I it's been a really long time. But there used to be there used to be this really, really amazing Korean restaurant um that I would go to that I would get uh bosom, right? The pork pork belly. Uh, I think balsam, and then I would get mackerel. <laughs> it was so good. 
Uh, but yeah, Bolsam does hit. Fresh mackerel is good. It is. Would you ever try fugu? I don't think so. I don't like to eat things that could potentially kill me. The samjang. Ah! I just want to eat! Give me Korean food! <laughs> I cry every day. <laughs> I used to be in a place where I had really good access to Korean food. So I could eat it whenever I wanted. And my life was so much better. And easier. Because I would get hot pot like once a week. I would just go out to an all-you-can-eat hot pot place, fill up, eat a ton of bok choy, eat chrysanthemum greens, eat a ton of uh, beef and, and pork thinly sliced. <laughs> Nanoki mushrooms. <laughs> and then I could get Korean barbecue, or I could get chil- <laughs> Or I could go into the H Mart and get bibimbap. <laughs> Uh, but hell doesn't really have Korean food. It sucks. Mung bean sprouts. Ugh. Stop. I'm hungry and I've already eaten enough today. <laughs> I'm glad before I hate all this food talk. Right? Well, I mean, it's about lunchtime. What I would... I actually have some... Uh, pork belly in the fridge and some kimchi. I really need to thaw out the pork, or the, the, the pork belly is in the freezer. And I need to make uh, kimchi jjigae. Because I have been aging the kimchi for about a year. <laughs> so it's time that it's plenty stinky. It's plenty disgusting in the best way possible. I love old kimchi. The oldest kimchi I've ever had was three years old and that shit was so crazy. I love it. Oh my God. So anyway, yeah, it's gonna be very sour and I'm so excited. So I need to cut it up and uh, make some kimchi jjigae. Three years old. Look, kimchi's already ferment fermented. Yeah, and it's pickled, so it just gets better with age. Think of it like wine. You know, if you drink a 50-year-old wine, you're like, Oh my god, my life is so mm, amazing. The smell, the fresh, it's not fresh, the sour grape smell. Mm, mm, yes, that alcoholic flavor of the, the grapes. Oh, amazing, you know? Like, you pay more. The thing about kimchi is kind of... Uh, similar <laughs> maybe not that old i don't know if people would eat 50 year old kimchi but it doesn't go bad it just gets better yeah so the kimchi in my fridge i've kept for a year and a half yeah look as long as it is there's no mold on top because if you don't store it properly there is a chance that there is mold on top of it if you notice mold or like something that smells wrong and i don't mean just like kimchi kimchi smells good to me but like obviously some people don't like the smell of kimchi but if it smells really really off and like something is expired maybe don't eat it but um yeah if it has mold you have to throw the whole thing away because it means it wasn't sealed properly it's going to kill you at that point. Throw it away. Don't test it. Don't get rid of the top layer and act like it's okay. You have to throw it at that point. But as long as there's no mold and it smells fine, you're good. You're golden. <laughs> I mean, Shiori's alive. I mean, that is by the grace of, you know, <laughs> she's lucky to be alive. <laughs> I actually, my my parents really like bread and I rarely eat bread, but every now and again, I will have a bread craving and I will need to eat bread. Okay. So one time I went and I made a sandwich, but I didn't look too closely at the bread and I took a bite out of it and I looked at it and I realized the bread on part of it was moldy and I immediately spit it out, threw it out, threw out the whole loaf of bread, screamed, brushed my teeth three times and went around and was like, Oh, Dad, why would you do that? Why would you keep moldy food in the house? There was mold in my mouth. I'm going to get sick and I'm going to die. <laughs> I threw such a fit over it. <laughs> it was such a... I mean, 
I don't think it was a ridiculous reaction. I was very scared that I was going to get very, very uh, sick. So I do not eat mold. And the moment I notice mold or like if I can smell something turning, then I get gross doubt. <gasps> Bail bird. It's called Mugenji. Aged kimchi. I love that so much. <gasps> Yay! Old kimchi buddies! I was always told that apparently old kimchi is something that old people like. And that new kimchi is is more what young young people flavored, quote unquote, whatever that means. So uh, everyone would always be like, haha, you're you have an old palate, you old person. <laughs> yeah, apparently I have grandmother tastes. Yeah, it's, it's okay to prefer new kimchi too, but I just feel like the things you can do with old kimchi, like if you're going to make anything, you know. If you're going to make kimchi tige, it's way better to use old kimchi to young kimchi just because of how it does it does everything, you know? How everything goes together. If you're cooking, you want old kimchi. A lot of people though prefer new kimchi and that's okay. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer. You eat all the young kimchi and leave the old kimchi to me, okay? If if you're at a restaurant and you get some kimchi and you're like, oh, it's really old, I'll be like, don't worry about it. I won't I won't let it go to waste. Hand it over. <laughs> I love kimchi. <laughs> Nerissa's is Korean. No, I I'm I'm white, but <laughs> if not apparent at this point, by my by my raven hair with blue bl natural blue highlights, but. Not quite a Korea boo. I just li I I just knew a lot of Korean people, and they introduced me to their food, and I was like, oh, I'd never had this before. <laughs> this is amazing. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, the Asians adopt you. I was I was e exactly that was the situation, adopted by Korean friends who then were like, girl, <laughs> save me, white girl, save me, guys, stop. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> as as a Korean, I can confirm Nurse is an honorary Korean. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, Korean at stomach. I do, I do. Uh, I realized when the the first time I had Korean food, and I will say, for example, my parents don't they don't dislike Korean food, but it's just not to their flavor. So the first time I had it, I was literally like, whoa. Like, I I don't see how I lived my life without this. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I lived without this all my life. But it makes sense that I would have never tried it. Because what I was used to eating growing up was, like, pot roast, steak, ribs, and, like, uh, ambrosia salad, and, like, goulash and ring salad you know like i was used to like very not <laughs> not things i think other people would also eat willingly so <laughs> orgar I, wait someone asked something uh how do i handle spice i'm good with spice i i like spicy food actually pot roast is amazing but it, it was like that was like the nice food that that I would I would eat when we, we knew that it was a good day or we were celebrating something when there was a pot roast cooking. <laughs> What's the hottest pepper you've eaten? Ah, uh, you know, that's a good question. I did one of those like hot chip challenges. I don't remember if it was ghost pepper or something else. But all I know is that shit sucked. That shit hurted. However, I have also done the spicy uh, noodle. You know the spicy bulldog noodles? I did have those. And I really liked them. <laughs> I Like, don't get me wrong. They're hot. I wouldn't eat them on a day-to-day -day basis. However, I was like, you know. This bulldog actually... Like, the, 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 the taste of the sauce and the noodles are actually really, really good. That, like, having this as, like, an occasional snack... I think would be really, really fun. <laughs> So I actually did do that. I, I I bought a ton and every time I felt like I really had like a spicy kick, I, I would eat the full duck. But again, I don't think I'd go out of my way to like eat it a ton. <laughs> but yeah. 
I I've only ever had the the first one that came out. I didn't ever get to like try the car carbonara and um two times spicy ones. But yeah. Gochujang is good. I had to throw out my gochujang recently because I didn't seal it properly. But I need more. I need what's the other one? Uh it, it's it's packaged similarly Koreans. I need your help. What is it's like it's not miso, but I had it described to me. Denjang, yeah, I think maybe. Danjang? <laughs> I think it's Denjang. I'm not sure. Yeah, but it was described as being similar to miso. Kind of. Yeah, soybean paste. It's deep brown. It comes in a brown packaging that's similar to the... the yeah. Dinjang, yeah. First one. Brown color. Yeah. <laughs> similar concept. Sanjang is the one you eat with meat. Dinjang is the one... Yeah, Dinjang then. So I use it for cooking. Ugh. I miss being able to have my fridge filled up with Korean stuff. Korean cookies. I miss cooking. Ah, <laughs> uh, my life. Man, the food topics is cursing my stomach. I'm sorry. I hope you're able to eat something tasty. Have you considered doing a hot wing challenge? I have done one once. And honestly, it was like atomic wings. And honestly, I felt like that was not worth it because it, it's they get to the point where so many of those places will just make it so spicy to the point where like it's not pleasant to eat and don't get me wrong i like spice but i don't like it if it's just spicy for the sake of being spicy rather than like oh it's spicy but still fun to eat like i feel like it, there has to be a good balance <laughs> has to be a good balance so Usually, I have hot sauce for when I have wings. But I use it... I use it sparingly because, I'll be honest, I prefer to dip my wings in honey mustard. <laughs> I just really like honey mustard. For people who are asking if I don't have access to a kitchen, that's not so much the case, but I live with a lot of other people. So the fridge is always full and I don't really have space to store things in the fridge. So, for example, even the fact that I've been meal ordering takes up quite a bit of space in the fridge. But that is probably the maximum amount of space I could take up in the fridge. <laughs> and they stack, so they take up a lot of space high, but um, they don't actually take up a ton. Get a mini fridge. <laughs> I talked about this before. I'm not getting a mini fridge because I have to keep it in my room and I'm not keeping stuff in my room. <laughs> That I'm going to like imagine coming up to my room to be like, oh, yeah, I want some fruit this morning and then having to bring down wash fruit, prepare it in the kitchen and then bring it back up. I'm sorry. I, it's too much. And I also don't have room for a fridge in my room. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I don't want anything else in my fridge or I don't want anything else in my room. It's already got too many things in it. So trust me, all all of the amazing solutions you think you might think of for my situation I've already thought of them and they know they do not work. <laughs> I have a real solution and it's to somehow convince everyone else to move out. <laughs> my sister and her husband and my brother. I'll convince them to, to leave and then suddenly there will be more fridge space for me. <laughs> you could move. Don't tell me what to do. No, I could do that. I am also considering that option. But I don't know. I really like living with family. You know? There's something that's really nice about being able to just, like, walk into the other room and, like, see my brother and be like, hey, I have something I can't do. Like, can you do it for me? Like, with pickle jars and stuff. Or, like, with my sister, too. Just, like, being able to walk in and be like, hey, can you help me with, like, this song thing I'm doing you know, like with Lilium, like being able to just like go in and be like, hey, can you just do this? And her being like, yeah. And like just having to walk into my room across the hall. <laughs> you know. So. Wait, every member lives in the mansion? Kid's husband. Ah, uh, okay, wait. I think some people seem to misunderstand. Malfa, Onerisa, she doesn't live here. She has four kids and she lives elsewhere with her husband 
My other sister is married. She has two kids that are cats. She doesn't have any children, okay? She doesn't have any kids. <laughs> she she doesn't have any children, Aradia or Ane Risa. Only fur babies, okay? So with that in mind, it there are no children living here. <laughs> I mean, adult children, I suppose, but there are no children living here. Except for my parents, and technically my parents are also children living here because my grandmas live here as well. <laughs> Risa, where are your kids? I don't have any. <laughs> but what about Rome? I had something to tell you, but I forget what it was about Rome. But I don't, I don't remember. Bro, Risa's not a child? No. Why would he be a child? He's an adult. He He's above the legal drinking age. <laughs> we are not your kids. Bet. No, you're not. You guys are just birds that I picked up off the streets. <laughs> Three generations in the house? Yeah! Again, I really like it because I can also just go downstairs and then see my grandma's. <laughs> Be like, hi, grandmas. And they're like, oh, hello, sweetie. How are you doing today, Narissa? We're working on a puzzle. <laughs> I'm working on a puzzle. Would you like to help? Look at me. I'm knitting. Would you like to see what I'm knitting? It's for my grandbaby who's about to be born from your, your cousin. <laughs> I'm like, that's so amazing. I'm so happy for you, grandmas. When are you going to get married, Narissa? Oh. <laughs> and plus you have a full team for Family Feud. That is true, however. Uh, I don't think we play games like... Th My parents really like to play Jackbox. Every time, especially that Malfa comes here, they're like, We all need to get together and play Mal... Uh, uh, jail j what is it? Jackbox! <laughs> but I'm like, shit, man. I'm gonna be honest. There's something about playing Jackbox with family that I just don't like. <laughs> I I like playing Jackbox with friends, okay? There's something about playing it with friends. But there's something really awkward about playing Jackbox with your family. You know what I mean? Um... You guys can probably understand because some of the games are, some of them have maybe inappropriate jokes. And it's kind of awkward when you're sitting in a room with your grandma, your mom, and you have to, you know, you know what I mean? You know, it's really awkward. <laughs> yeah, hinge versus, exactly. Like, I'd much rather play, like, the game of life with my family. <laughs> Maybe your parents, yeah. Sisters sisters and brothers, yeah, it's whatever. But, like, yeah, definitely. There's a family filter, yeah, but my parents are the ones who pick everything. So they just pick whatever, and they're like, Oh, this one looks like fun! Let's do this one, okay? <laughs> uh, I play Cards Against Humanity with my 79-year-old grandma, and she was the dirtiest one at the table. I'd believe that. Ugh. Uh, if I was to lead a team for Family Feud, look, I'm going to be honest, apart from when we did the collaboration of Family Feud, I actually don't know what Family Feud is. I never watched it. I remember my grandma's watching Wheel of Fortune a lot. <laughs> I really liked watching Wheel of Fortune, but like Family Feud and like all these other shows, like, I don't know. Oh yeah, Mama Risa's stream getting closer and closer. She reminds me of that every day. <laughs> She's like, tell them to subscribe. And I'm like, anyone watching me is already probably subscribed, Mama. <laughs> She's like, to remind them that I'm going to be there in like 500k subscribers. 48k more. Yeah, it's something. And I'm like, Mom, it's fine. It's okay. She's very cute. She's very excited. She's like, what are we going to do for our first collab? <laughs> so... Ja tell us anyway. Well, this is me telling you. <laughs> she really can't wait. She's very excited to meet everyone. But, uh, yeah. Ooh, 600k is coming slowly but surely. 
Your family has such a rare bond. Yeah, you could call it that. <laughs> you you could call it that. My my family and me are I mean, you guys have seen how I talk to Aradia, for example. We we definitely banter uh a lot. <laughs> and I I hate to say with my dad, it is exactly the same. We banter back and forth and like it's to the point where my mom Despite having raised us and been around us our whole lives and literally marrying my dad, she does not get the sense of humor. <laughs> so she misunderstands when we're bantering and thinks we're fighting and will actually go, stop it, stop it. <laughs> we're like, I stop, stop fighting. We're like, oh, mom, no, we're not fighting. We're laughing. We have smiles on our faces. And she'll be like, no, stop. <laughs> it's very silly um but yeah it's it's to the point too when sometimes occasionally if i'd bring a, a friend over they'd be like yo you talk to your parents like that and i'm like oh it's not serious and they're like how could you how do you get away with that and i'm like no it's you don't understand like it's not serious at all like i'm still gonna do what they told me to do and i'm still gonna behave in line i don't want i don't want to get my ass beat like <laughs> i i respect my parents don't worry it's just that's just how we talk to each other i promise and then they're like mm, mm. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> where's the respect for your elders <laughs> yeah i don't know i i like the family dynamic I, I I enjoy it, but uh, it's definitely, I think, something that not everyone gets. <laughs> uh, I don't care if you answered before, but what did your family think of your vacation? Um, they were jealous. Actually, when my mom heard that I was going to be meeting Kiana's mom, um, she actually asked if she could come to Austria with me and cat sit with Kiara's mom and then she was like in that way when we get back we could we could maybe do like a collaboration with you guys and do some some mom streams with the bull and i was like mom no <laughs> mom <laughs> well the thing the thing about my mom is um she can't get around very well um due to, due to an illness so i was like i don't think I don't think that's possible anyway. <laughs> I, I don't think that's a, such a good idea. Um, but she she was very... She was very eager to... And, and jealous. And then she immediately was like, Well, you're meeting Kiara's mom. So I think it's only fair I meet Kiara too. So you have to, you have to send... Uh, or you have to tell her that she has to come visit us at some point. So we can meet... And my dad's cooperated on this. They're like, we need to meet our new daughter. <laughs> so safe to safe to say, um, my parents are already very obsessed uh, with Kiara and consider her their child. They do that with Bibu too, though. They're like, we need to meet Bibu. You need to bring Bibu over. Bibu is our daughter now. <laughs> Uh, Kiara replaced Bibu? No, Kiara and Bibu are both being uh, kidnapped by my family. Yeah, Bibu is everyone's daughter. I know, Bibu is literally my daughter. Like, come on. New Hollow fans. They are new Hollow fans. Until I debuted, they had no freaking idea what Hollow Live was. Even though I talked about it, they're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds nice, dear. <laughs> and then I debuted, and suddenly they're like, oh my god, everyone's so cute. These are your co workers. Oh my god, we love. <laughs> so yeah it's quite cute quite cute <sighs> oh sorry i'm trying to read the chat but it's going too fast for my brain to comprehend um uh. soon every hollow moon will be part of the raven raven uh croft household you're so right they probably will at some point <laughs> Uh, uh, sounds like every parent ever. Okay, I'm glad. See, someone else can relate. Any surprising Oshis from members of your family? That's a good question. I actually don't know. 
<laughs> Ollie gonna be a very sus adoption? <laughs> uh, well, Ollie... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's a zombie. I feel like... But she fits right in. You know, we live in hell. So there's nothing wrong with that. Welcome new people. <laughs> uh... Kiata have a thing for VTuber moms. Risa might be popular with their actual mothers. I actually... I have a thing about... I have a thing about... Um, persuading my friend's mothers to become obsessed with me. <laughs> uh, usually, whenever I have a friend, I will meet their mother... And their mother will get to the point where they will start asking when I'm going to come over again. <laughs> Apparently, I am just very polite, I suppose. And uh, it, it is apparently polite in a way that not all people are when they come over and meet other people's parents. So, charismatic? Charismatic might be the word, too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I was the mom friend, so I think when I'd go over to houses, like, even though obviously you're there for your friend, like, when their parents are talking to you, I feel like it's important to, like, talk back and riz them up a little bit. Be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good, I'm a good friend to your kid. You can trust, you can trust me. You can trust that if I'm out with them, that I'm going to make sure that everything's safe and that no, nothing bad's going to happen and that, like, we're going to keep you updated, you know, that sort of thing. But then also, I, I act like another child. So if they're like, Narissa, would you rub my shoulders? I'm like, of course. I'll be right over, okay? <laughs> if I'm having a sleepover or something. <laughs> so. Uh, why is it important to speak to your parents to make sure they trust? Yeah, exactly. Look, I just, I can riz, okay? I know, I know how to make parents love me. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, so I was always I was always very close with people's parents. Ugh. Ugh. <sighs> I'm starting to see why she was locked. <laughs> I would look. I was I was trying to be the next young gravy. Uh, you know, look coming for all the milfs. Is your mom a milf? Then she's mine now. I say that as if anyone here knows who young gravy is. <laughs> uh, but his whole uh, Ami has a rivalry <laughs> you're the multiple people now though eh have I <laughs> not young gravy hey he's funny <laughs> <laughs> this music's funny. I wanted to sing. I wanted to sing a young, young gravy song. Oops, for karaoke. But um, we can't. It's not on jazz rack. You know how much that mentally kills me. Cause I'm just like, it's so funny. <laughs> More ice spies, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't believe that that got clipped and that so many people saw it. Did you guys know Fauna? Fauna sent me it even. And I was like, no. <laughs> Everyone. I mean, it's my fault for performing a Boy's a Liar in the first place. But I didn't, I, you know, usually stuff from my karaoke, it's not like anyone talks about it like too, too much afterwards, you know, apart from like within the jailbirds. But <laughs> it seems like it, it maybe fell out of the, the target audience, which is fine. I'm cringe and I am free, so I don't particularly mind. But I was just also surprised because it's the part where I'm rapping as shittily as possible. You said I'm good enough. Grandma did it. Do my shit that I shouldn't have. <laughs> it's a good song and not even cringe. I mean, I agree. But I think some people would definitely consider that sort of music cringe. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but it's probably the majority of my fan base. Not all of them, but probably the majority. <laughs> I think that song popped off more with... Did it really? Boys. 
level with me. You like Boys a Liar? <laughs> you like that song? Ah, uh, thank you for the 20 gifted memberships to the community. Not necessarily a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Being cringe is free. It is. Yes, I'm lying. Okay, I see. <laughs> I think it's catchy. It is catchy! I The only thing I don't like about it is the, the beat uh, is hard to sing along to, but I like to listen to it. Music is not my strong suit, I see. No. <laughs> Win WAP. Uh, we can't. It's not on Jazz Rack. I looked it up because I was going to sing it for karaoke. I was very sad to see that I couldn't uh, sing WAP. So I was so ready to, to sing the, the lyrics. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh my, oh my god, people are gonna love it if I sing this song. It's so, you know, it's so crazy. And then I couldn't. So, huh, so glad you couldn't. Now that is cringe. Excuse me! We dodged a bullet. Guys! How could you? That would absolutely get clipped. I mean, probably. But, like, just imagine. <laughs> it would have been funny. It would have been funny! That's the, that's the point. I don't know. I just like to have fun when I'm singing and not, like, seriously. That's the whole point, you know? And, like, karaoke, I want to have fun. But a lot of the fun songs I just want to sing are not on jazz rack so i just have to pick all my emo songs <laughs> but yeah there is the singing rap god i i'm actually not a huge eminem fan i used to really like eminem but then when i found out that he's not saying oh there goes gravity and is just saying oh there goes gravity i i suddenly i was like wow he fell off suddenly i'm not i'm not a fan anymore <laughs> No, I used to I used to listen to Eminem a lot back in the day. Um but not not so much now. Not not so much now. Just not I think he's amazing. Like he's a very amazing rapper, but it's just it doesn't appeal to me, I guess. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's fine. It's just like how some of you probably don't give a shit about the Smiths, but I really like the Smiths. <laughs> Yeah, I really liked Guilty Conscience and uh, cleaning out my closet and lose yourself, you know. But uh, n nowadays, I don't know. Just, just a lot of his old stuff didn't really, or new newer stuff didn't really like speak to me. Didn't really speak of my language, you know. Nah. Oh, the chat broke for a second. It's okay. We have gravy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, will the real Slim Shady... Uh, I'm Sugar Baby, the real Sugar Baby. That's not the song, but... I'm Slim Shady, the real Slim Shady. I like that one, but because specifically of the Sugar Baby remix. <laughs> I'm Sugar Baby, the real Sugar Baby. Oh, yeah, the Sugar Babies are just imitating so well. <laughs> Uh, I think that was by uh, an American voice actor. Was it Sandy Fox? I don't know. But her voice is so cute. <laughs> so I really like that one. That sounds annoyingly cute. It is annoyingly cute. It's great, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bibu, Bibu! I should tell her about that. I wonder if she's heard it before. She would do such a good job singing something like that. Oh, it's Stephanie Beard! Yeah, 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 yeah! Stephanie Beard! She... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. She was the original voice. I remember because I recognized it because you guys remember the 90s dub of, um... The 90s dub of Sailor Moon, I remember it freaked me out the first time I heard Sugar Baby because I was like, oh my god, this is fucking Chibi Moon or Re Rini. <laughs> this is her voice. Why is she singing these lyrics? Rini, how could you do this? <laughs> okay, wait. I need, to, I need to link that to her now before I forget. Give me one second. I'm not going to be able to read chat. 
Wait, oh my god, sorry. Uh, I'm Sugar Baby, the real Sugar Baby. What is it called? Okay, there we go. I'm gonna link it to Baby and ask her- <laughs> To Baby! I'm gonna link it to Bibu! And ask her to sing it for me! To Bibu! Bibu, please sing this for me. Thanks. It is time for her to tax another song. <laughs> it is time for Bibu to tax another and take it for her own. Bibu, baby, same thing. Exactly. I mean, when Bibu taxes you, she turns you into a baby. She puts in, she turns you into a baby. Did I got B, I got Bibu tax. She turned me into a baby. Bibu needs to stop taxing people <laughs> and turning them into babies. <laughs> I love you, Bibu. You're my baby girl. Truly. You already gotten a Rizzler taxed. <laughs> I don't think that exists. You just you just get you get rizzed by me. I am the Rizzler. Ah. <sighs> You give her too much power. She just is too powerful. Don't you guys know how freaking powerful Bibu is? She's so powerful. That's my girl. My Bibu. You say this, but you were already baby. Yeah, but she made me like baby baby, you know? <laughs> like baby baby baby, oh. Baby baby baby, no. I don't actually know what the words are to that song. She even got management. She got everyone with her memes. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> we were we were all going crazy about this. Sticking out your gap for Nerizzler. <laughs> so that's my girl. My bestie. My baby. God, I missed her so much. I hope I can talk to them again soon. I hope we collab soon. I need us to do something. I haven't had enough jewel bird content for my for my health, you know. Same with Shio Raven. I need I need a Shiori collab. Shiori, Shiori, please collaborate with me. I haven't thought of anything to do, but let's do something together, okay? She's playing Pal World a lot if you want to join her. I was actually waiting for something to get too much into Pal World, which is why I'm not playing it till the end of the week. I was actually supposed to be playing Pal World today, but now the servers are down and I had a feeling something might be wrong since they just launched them. So, uh, it's good that I'm not playing them today. <sighs> At least there's Friday Advent collabs, I know. But yeah, so today we chat so hopefully that was okay with all of you sorry for not playing pal world but hopefully hopefully everything will be all fixed and running before long imagine if it was a server merger i wish Ugh. itsy ah uh. <gasps> Please never stop the advent collabs. I don't want to stop the advent collabs. I don't think anyone does. We're like obsessed. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. But we're obsessed with each other. <laughs> what? It's been almost six months. And we've pretty much successfully collabed once every single week. Since then. You know? Uh, we, we love each other. <laughs> We, we have a very special bond throughout Advent. Um, we just love each other, you know? And we like, we like to hang out genuinely. So it, it makes it really easy and it's nice because it means that we can keep talking <laughs> often even when we're all busy because, you know, it's like, you know what to expect. There's going to be an Advent collab, you know? It, it, makes, it, it makes it really nice. So, for me, it helps me. It helps me feel connected. And it helps me definitely feel stronger. Because I have all of Advent and I know that th they'll be there for me. 
What was the last thing you sent Fuawa? I don't want to know. Let me check. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you. We were talking about something that uh, doesn't exist yet. <laughs> don't worry about it. Full Zen Clouds are goaded. They are goaded. It's just so fun. It's like, it's really nice. Because, again, like, it gives me something to look forward to every week. Um, so it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> my girls. I, I need to plan some more collabs now that I'm back, though. I'm, I'm eagerly waiting to see, uh, what else I can, I can do. Do, 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 do. Yeah, advent Adventrix, really, you guys, you guys are winning because you like everyone in Advent. Here you go. Nidika, I need to contact Nidika. I just, I, I, I am, Kiara, I think, doesn't realize. Sorry to talk about Kiara all of a sudden. I just am obsessed with her, too. Uh, <laughs> Kiara doesn't realize how amazing she is. She just has the most crazy fucking amazing ideas. That she just comes up with. She just comes up with them. Like out of nowhere. And she's just like, hey, so I have this plan for this collab and we're doing it. And I'm like, yeah, that's a, that, that's amazing. Y yeah. <laughs> and then I try to think of something and I'm like, I have no thoughts. You know, my brain's empty. <laughs> so yeah, her sock puppet videos, her like all the collabs she came up with while we were gone. I... I'm going to be honest, I didn't know we were going to be streaming so much while we were in the Maldives. We streamed, like, pretty much, a, what, every day on her channel? Every other day is something. It was a lot. It was a lot. I thought we were going to stream maybe twice. <laughs> but she was, she was ready. She's like, nah, I plan the whole week. <laughs> She's so amazing. She's, like, a natural. Like, I was like... We're on vacation. I, I have no thought process. And meanwhile, she's like, don't worry, fam. I've already thought of everything. <laughs> she's so amazing. Uh, yeah, I miss her. I hope she's enjoying her break. We've gotten to talk a little, but, you know, I technically am work. So uh, I didn't want to bug her too much while she's taking time for herself. So... I showed her my jewelry collection. And don't tell her this. I'll tell her myself, okay? But when I was at Kiara's house, she had this hand soap from a brand that I already use. I, I use their perfume, uh, L'Occitane. And I love their perfume. It's literally my, uh, my signature scent, okay? I use it all the time. It's uh, cherry blossom. It's great. So anyways, I was at her house, and she had this uh, L'Occitane uh bar hand soap and i was like oh my god i love this uh i like the scent is really good so i looked it up online to go to the l'occitane website to buy it they either don't sell it in the states or she just has for whatever reason a discontinued l'occitane scent so i'm just sitting there and i was like are you kidding <laughs> are you kidding so I had to go to eBay and find and find a freaking I had to find it. So I, I, I went and I searched for it. And at first I found one and I didn't realize it, it might be the same scent, but the color is different. So I was like, OK, I don't want this one because I want I want the pink one. So I, I kept searching and then I ended up finding it. So I bought it and I bought I have two of them now. OK, I have two. So I need to send her and be like, I really liked your soap <laughs> with a picture of it. <laughs> uh, but she's going to be like, why are you so fucking creepy? I'm so sorry, Kiara. I really liked the smell of your soap. Please forgive me. It just made my hands feel so fresh afterwards. Uh, do it till I, I mean, I'm sure she will. But, you know, oh, I'm always anxious. <laughs> least obsessed KFP, if you say so. You call me the least obsessed. I literally got into Hololive just to become Kiara's friend. Who's who's really the least obsessed, huh? 
<laughs> Joke, joking, obviously. Before anyone, I, I'm sure there are some people who actually think that that's genuine about me, but uh, I did join Hololive because I wanted to be in Hololive, and being able to talk to Kiara is just a perk. Because <laughs> I was indeed a fan, but uh, believe it or not, I did not apply to Hololive with the with the uh, sole intention of hopefully becoming <laughs> Kiana's friend. <laughs> it's a perk, you know. It, it's it's a perk uh, and a benefit, but not yeah, a bonus exactly. Just just before anyone misunderstands my sarcasm. <laughs> I mean, technically, if we're talking lore-wise, I actually got into Hololive because uh, all of Advent crashed into the building and we're paying off our debt um, because we destroyed it. The old Hololive building. Um, on us, obviously. Like, wh how could we do such a thing? Uh... <laughs> but yeah. Still in debt. I'll be in debt for the rest of my life, but it's fine you joined for us right i mean yeah that's also being able to have you guys is actually a really amazing part of being here too is you know i i have this amazing audience who actually wants to come to my streams and like listen to my music and like hang out with me and like listen to the dumb shit i say <laughs> and talk back <laughs> so i'm really happy to have you guys jailbirds i'm really happy to have such a kind and like fun audience that I, I like to spend time with. Like, streaming for me is fun, too. So. <laughs> I like hanging out. And you guys always brighten my day. Even if I'm having a bad day, I still usually will stream. And usually I end feeling better than I did before. Because I got to hang out with you guys. So. I'd like to, I'd like to think of our relationship as mutually exclusive. Not mutually exclusive. Excuse me. Mutually. What is a word that I'm thinking of? Beneficial? Mutually beneficial relationship. I stream, you have a streamer to watch, and then we have fun together, and then... <laughs> Symbiotic? Uh, parasitic? <laughs> Am I a parasite? Oh my god. Symbiotic, yeah. Mutually parasocial, oh my god. Yeah. But, so, it's, it's, um... You guys, guys, stop making fun of me. I just was complimenting you and calling you nice. And then you start being mean to me. <laughs> I'm too, I'm too. You can't, you can't. You have to be nice to me. <laughs> oh my God. We still love you. Don't worry. Okay, good. <laughs> we are Venom. <laughs> but yeah. I have not reverted to Babu mode. I'm just fine. But yeah, we, we have a mutually beneficial relationship where I stream. We're able to have fun together, but I also leave and have a uh, good time after because I got to have fun with you guys. So, beneficial. Very few times. I think there's only been one time I can recall where I left a stream feeling not so good. And th that's... Don't worry about that. <laughs> Because that'll just happen any day, you know, uh, uh, with anything eventually, no matter how much you like doing it, you know. We are, Nerissa. You could say that. Uh, Deadweight Nero, thank you very much for the pinky. Always love the quality time we get to spend with you. It helps an otherwise soul-draining shift go by faster as well. Thanks for doing your best, gorgeous. Thank you, and thank you for the pinky. Was it our fault? No. Uh, it is not your guys' fault. <laughs> Usually, usually if I have like a bad day streaming, it's because of the game that I played, <laughs> which is usually my fault because I picked the game and I just didn't enjoy it or like I, you know, like had a really hard time with it. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, usually it's not like a, a chat problem <laughs> yet. Yeah, or tech issues. I think I think that one that one stream that I did that um you know went really kind of like a lot of issues with the timing and stuff. Yeah. I, I had a really hard time in that one and I, I think even though it improved 
improved. It definitely improved. But I still kind of left, like, feeling really, like, sad and, um, like, disappointed in myself because, you know, like, that one was hard because there's a lot of people who I think probably weren't really fans anyway. Um, um, so it's kind of like they, they were coming because they wanted to see my karaoke because I'm still pretty new. <laughs> And so even though I, I prepared a lot, you know, sometimes the timing changes when you're actually like live, live, it'll, it'll fuck itself up. And I'll, I've gotten more used to it now, you know, but some people are like, oh, like I was like, I promise I, I, I fixed the timing before I started. And then some people were like, with no indication that it was a joke, they're like, sure you did. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't understand why people are being so mean to me. <laughs> I didn't realize my karaoke having having uh, technical difficulties was such an inconvenience to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that was a long time ago now that, like, uh, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, like, it, it was a long time ago. I figured it out now, and I've gotten better at just ignoring people who say stuff like that. So, not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's okay, Risa. You have us. Yeah. And when you guys joke about it, not <laughs> stuff not going well, it's usually uh, worded better. But yeah, it does it at the end of the day. Negative stuff doesn't matter too much. But, you know, it was hard because settling in to Hollow Live. As you can imagine, is a really a difficult task, actually. Because, you know, you're new, and now suddenly you get to talk to all these amazing people that you've looked up to for years. <laughs> and you have all these people suddenly who really, really like you and are really interested in you. So, yeah, big shoes to fill kind of feeling. So, for, for a while, I think for the first few months, everything felt really, really more stressful than it actually was. Because it felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders and that if I wasn't perfect, that I would be letting people down. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, no one likes the feeling of like letting anyone down, you know? Even when I worked in, in fast food, like I would I would get genuinely sad if, if I felt like someone had a really bad day because I wasn't able to like get their food fast enough. <laughs> so mayhaps I'm just a little bit of a sensitive baby. Oh, at so, at some points, but again, I, I've gotten I've gotten better now, um, and feel more more at home and less like I'm less like I'm uh like less like I I'm intruding and don't belong here. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's definitely at first I I kind of had that feeling and I was like, oh no, I don't belong. My genmates are so wonderful. Myth is so wonderful. Promise is so wonderful. JP is so wonderful. IDs, I don't fit in here. I don't deserve to talk to these people. <laughs> but, you know, now I'm like, haha. Mume, look at this meme. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so. Sorry for being a bit personal on a non member stream. What am I doing? But, yeah. Haha, <laughs> fun meme. Excuse me. <laughs> so, that's... That's, uh... That's... Now, that, that's a while ago how things have been. But now, I'm just, like, I'm back from vacation and I have things to do. And I'm, like, too relaxed to do them. <laughs> You're in your place there 100%. Thank you. I mean, I did. I had to... I had to do that whole process, you know? The whole thing. I'm I don't like having to think about it. <laughs> I talked it I talked about it in my short. I talked about getting rejected before. Um and like really, once you when you get rejected, sometimes it's hard to even want to try again, you know? And like I was so scared that I was not going to make it after making it like far. Um that I was like I don't think I will have the confidence to try again if I don't pass. <laughs> because this time I've actually they've actually talked to me. <laughs> so if I if I get rejected now, I'll be really embarrassed. <laughs> but luckily, 
Luckily, that's not what fate had in store for me. Right? So, it's it's uh, quite amazing. And Nene tried like five times. I think Nene, I think it is, who talked about it here, like this as well, saying like, but I didn't ever get like directly rejected, so it didn't feel as bad. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you guys here with me. So we 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 stay strong together, jailbirds. That is the goal. Ugh. You don't fail when you lose. You fail when you give up. Exactly. If you if you give up on your dreams, they'll never come true. So yeah. <laughs> <sighs> trying so hard to roll my R's. Kiana told me how she rolled her R's and suddenly I realized the German R is closer to the way that I make the sound. So now I am convinced that I can learn to do the, the way that they do when they speak German. Also, the real Chaos Blade, thank you for the pinky. Thank you for your first super chat on a live stream for your first time. I never knew the feeling of having an Oshi and all the emotions that encompassed it until you came along. So thank you for being here. Thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> that does sound like a rolled R. See, the thing is I can't go like, ah, ah, Reba. You know, like when people do that and they like roll it. I don't know how to do that. But I can go, hr, hr. Uh, <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, tip of the tongue versus back. Yeah, I can't do tip of the tongue. No matter how many times I've tried, I just can't get it to vibrate. I don't know where I'm supposed to put it in my mouth to get it to vibrate. Because no matter where I put it, it won't vibrate. I don't understand. I've had so many people be like, it's easy, just do it like this. Put the tongue here and just... And they, they then they just do it. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to whistle, you know? <laughs> like, I can kind of whistle, but I can't like... Some people whistle so well. And it makes me so mad because I wish that that was me. But I just can't. I can't do it. I just can't do it. That's a good whistle. Thank you. I wish I could whistle quality enough for it to sound good for like songs. So I could like whistle in songs. But I can't. Alas. Alack. And maybe someday, but I'm not optimistic about it. But yeah. Try to tilt your head and close your eyes to do it. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. You're like Peppa Pig. I am. I call people and I'm like, Hello. I don't know how to roll my Oz. Do you know how to roll your R's? And they're like, no, how do you do it, Peppa? I'm like, well, you blow it through, you, you put your tongue at the front of your mouth and you blow air so it, it moves back and forth really fast. And they're like, like this? And then they do it effortlessly and then I hang up the phone. And that's how that would go. <laughs> yeah, ends call. <laughs> I love Peppa Pig. <laughs> That clip is so fucking funny. Like, why would you make comedy like that? And the fact that, like, she she's like, what's wrong, Peppa? Her mom. And she's like, I can't roll my Oz. And she's like, never mind. I'm making food. And she's like, shut up. Even though she asked her what was wrong. Oh, my God. It's so crazy. <sighs> Thanks for the play-by-play. -play. You're so welcome. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Also, sorry, wait, I just got an email. And let me just read it. Um, because I don't understand what this is. Uh. 
do do. Uh, what is this? Sorry, it's an important email. Read it out loud? No. <laughs> Not from Mane chan, no. Mm. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, I understand. Okay. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Okay, sorry, this is something that I'll have to do urgently, but I can do it later. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> Your car's extended warranty. How did you know? <laughs> it's nothing, it's nothing bad. It's just something I have to do. I have to do, um, quickly. But, uh, like, I have, like, I have time to do it, you know? Nothing, nothing bad. I'm not getting bonked! It's not from Mane, Mane-chan. Mane-chan's asleep, so... The Arabian prince is calling. <laughs> Excuse me? No, it's not a prince. It's for my taxes, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's none of your business. <laughs> uh. Oh no, IRS John! <laughs> yeah, I hate doing them too. That's like arguably the worst part about being an adult. I really wish that they'd teach you in school how to do your taxes. Um, that would be nice because I hate them. Can't evade taxes in hell. You're so right. <laughs> because then uh, you'll get tracked down and killed by demons and put in a little fiery lava pit for uh, until you pay them. And it's really hard to pay them when you are burning. <laughs> Or season of the year. Yeah, I'm ready to just get it done and over with. Uh, to be fair, American taxes are bad. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, uh, it's literally math. Okay. Uh, no, it's not. Because what it really is, is I already have everything. But filling out the actual forms are not easy. And, theoretically, they know how much you owe. So I don't see why they can't just tell me how much I owe them. <laughs> Instead of a whole sitting there and being like, you have to figure it out. I, I can't tell you. And I'm like, but please? <laughs> Please, it would make this so much easier. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's fine. I just, uh, I have to make sure that I, I do everything correctly. So I'm, that's, that's all. That's all. Oh, speaking of that phrase, do you guys know the devil wears Prada? I watched that for the first time on the plane ride home. For the first time. It was, it was a very interesting experience. I had never seen it before. I was so excited when I realized that they had it. Because I was like, okay, I've heard about this movie. It's iconic. It's got Meryl Streep and she's iconic. Um, I need to see this movie. And, you know, I, but I would never think about it enough to just watch it, you know? So I was like, okay, eventually, eventually it'll happen. <laughs> I really liked it. I, you know, I didn't really like the ending. I, I understood what they were getting at, but, um, I don't know. What's your guys' is opinion on that movie? <laughs> I, I personally, yeah, I think he, okay, don't get me wrong. That, that guy who was flirting with her. That guy sucked, okay? He, she made clear she was in a relationship. Um, and he still kept coming on to her. Like, I feel like on purpose, knowing that, like, there was probably people that she knew around <laughs> causing the issue with her friend. But, like, the fact that she's coming and, like, she's getting things from work and she's giving them 
stuff. <laughs> she's like giving them free expensive stuff that she's getting as a job benefit. She doesn't have to do that. She could literally just sit there and keep all those things to herself if she was as selfish as they were making her out to be. But like she didn't, you know? And I get that like it's really sad when there are certain things that like can't be done together like i'm sure it really sucked for her boyfriend to be like oh she missed my birthday but like i don't know it felt like he wasn't very understanding of what she was doing <laughs> you know what i mean like she's like i'm working this job it'll open up a lot of like really good opportunities for me if if i if i work here like yeah it's hard work yeah it really sucks i am being underpaid but like you know yeah, movie's got to have conflict, but, like, I just don't know why she got back together with him at the end. Like, he was like, you're not the you I knew anymore. And I'm like, bro, people are meant to change. We are not meant to be these stagnant beings. Did you see how hot he was? I'm sorry. He was not hot. <laughs> he was, I mean, he wasn't not attractive, but, like, I didn't really think he was anything special either, you know? Like, he just kind of was there, and then he was like, <laughs> I don't know. He was he was kind of an asshole at the beginning, too. Like, he, like, talked down to her a few times, and I was just kind of sitting there like, eh. Like, I think people think it's a compliment when someone is, like, really, really dressed up to compliment someone, and it is. But it... You'll also realize that the more you do that, um, and if you only compliment people when they're dressed up, it makes people self-conscious about how they look without those things, right? 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 So, for women, <laughs> sometimes you will only get complimented if you're wearing uh, a ton of makeup or just exuberantly nice. So, it's kind of like, he like complimented her when she was really dressed up but like in a way that like rubbed me the wrong way you know what i'm you know what i mean like it felt like it was in this way that was how do i describe it 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 felt like it, it it's a backhanded compliment in a way because i think so so many women are just like so beautiful and honestly I think a woman is most beautiful when she's sitting in her room in her pajamas, like sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> um, maybe people don't agree with that, but like, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Like, I feel like, yeah, I think my girlfriends are like gorgeous when they're like dressed up and like dressed to the nines. But I feel like my female friends look the best when they are just in their most natural habitat and environment. No makeup, hair not done, pajamas on. Uh, just laying in bed, like, or doing anything, you know, like, it doesn't have to be laying in bed, like, playing on their computer, sitting at the dinner table, you know, like, it, does, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. That's just my opinion. Again, you can totally disagree if you do. That's totally fine. But, like, so for me, I just, that is where I see the beauty in things. And, again, I still definitely, like, when my girls dress up and they're, like, dressed to the nines, hair, like, crimped and, like, amazing makeup on and, like, amazing outfit, I'm like, yes, queen! queen you look amazing but i think it's also important to love people in their like most natural state too and so i didn't like that like the way he complimented her seemed like this very like as if she is nothing and like even before she went through her transformation if i remember correctly he said something too that was just really mm, like eh. like he, he made it sound like he looked at her as if she was nothing special and I just don't know why she wasted time and wanted to go back to this guy who treated her as if she was nothing special. <laughs> like, why would you want someone who thinks that about you? I don't know. She's an M. You might be right, actually. Maybe, maybe uh, mm? you, you actually wait. You're on to something. You're on to something, actually. Um, how many times did she compliment him? I don't know, because the focus of the movie wasn't on that. But she definitely never talked down to him. I can tell you that. <laughs> she never made a, a, a swipe at his appearance just for being a plain looking guy. So I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. 
Men never get compliments. Look, you want to know why men don't get compliments? There was this kid in school when I was a kid, and he had the most beautiful eyelashes I'd ever seen in my life. These were the beautiful, long, naturally curled, and the thing was he was a redhead, so his eyelashes were stark white. Okay, stark white, so beautiful. I just could not contain myself. This is like middle school, okay? And I had to turn to him and I needed to be like, look, I'm sorry, I know this is so weird. You have amazing eyelashes. They are so beautiful. And he told everyone and every single guy called me weird and made fun of me. So I don't want to hear guys being like, oh, guys never get compliments. Every time I've ever complimented a guy, guys have made fucking fun of me. <laughs> I still compliment people, though, and uh, I still get made fun of for it when I compliment guys. So I just, I just, you know, I feel like you guys are giving me conflicting signals. <laughs> when I compliment Astarian too much, you guys don't like it. When I, when I compliment and talk about how I think hairy men need to be appreciated, s some of you are like, oh, it's so weird. Why would you say that? <laughs> So I don't, I don't want to hear this, okay? I don't want to hear this, guys. Don't get complimented enough. Sounds like a, sounds like a, you probably, you probably just don't hear it when it does happen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I want compliments. I've complimented you guys so much already. I can't compliment your appearances because there's too many of you at this particular moment. <laughs> But I don't know. In general, I think I think humans are really gorgeous. And I always think there's something that you can love about everyone. Like, I feel like you can look at anyone and find something really wonderful about, like, their face or body or otherwise. Like, that's just, that's just, the, that's just how it is, you know? So, but, <sighs> you know how it is. <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 it's not, it's weird when I compliment people, apparently. Apparently, I am not allowed to compliment people because every time I do, it is too strange. <laughs> Maybe it's a phrasing issue? I don't know. I don't think I phrase it too weird. Because it's not like, it's not like I'm going up to guys being like, bro, you're so hot. You know, like, it's not like that. I'm just like, oh my god, you have the most amazing statement nose I've ever seen. It is so there and it like really frames your face and just brings all of your features together. And then I'm the weird one. I'm the weird one, apparently, when I say shit like that. Like, excuse me. Too detailed? Okay, what do you want to hear? <laughs> Now nah, you're too wholesome, they panic. I see. I see. I think guys maybe are just not as used to being complimented, perhaps. So maybe it's the case that then when it does happen, maybe it's weird. But yeah. Uh, I mean, even Kiata, I think, got tired of me complimenting her. <laughs> maybe she got tired of me. Because you, you kept hearing her. Every time I looked over at her, I was like, oh my god, she's so cute. Oh, she's so fucking cute. I can't do it. She's so fucking cute, you know? Uh, and she's like, she needs to stop. <laughs> so apparently I'm too much, maybe. So maybe that's why people don't like when I compliment them. Ooh. But yeah, anyways, back, back to the subject at hand, which was the Devil Wears Prada. It's, it's not about whether she complimented him or not, because the point was he complimented her when she had a, a upgrade in her appearance, but it was by putting down how she looked before and before when she was also just living normally and dressed completely normally, he was down on her appearance for no reason. So you're like, why didn't she compliment him? Uh, she never put him down at any point in the movie, but he also wasn't doing anything uh, particularly different throughout the 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 whole movie you know so it's like it's not that he didn't earn it but like there was no like she had done a quote unquote glow up quote unquote which usually people will tell you when you look different <laughs> than usual you know people are more likely to say something nice to you when you are dressed differently it is simply just a fact 
it, it's 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 even when you're dressed worse than usual people are more likely to say something to you you know like people will be like wow what's wrong with you today you look horrible <laughs> Oh, hey, why aren't you uh, wearing clothes today? That's kind of weird. You should put those on. What's going on with you? Hmm? Is everything okay? You know? So, it's like a... If if you... Also, I just realized the chat wasn't on this whole time. Why does it look like that? Hmm? Why is it... Hello? <laughs> it's just normal! Excuse me. But again, it's not to say like someone does or doesn't deserve compliments because that's not the point like of the movie. The point is talking down to someone and then like thinking that is the person you need to get back together with when they talk down to you. You know, I don't think that's good ever. I think it'd be good to be, I think you guys should aspire as well to be in relationships where you mutually uh, compliment each other all the time. I think that would be best. <laughs> hey, that's me. No, don't look, you guys. It's broken. I don't know why it's broken. I can't fix it. Yay, I got it. <laughs> You're, we're, we're back, gamers. Finally. <laughs> we're broken. Yeah, we're back now. We are so back, gamers. Yes. <laughs> However, if we're talking about Meryl Streep, I thought in that movie that that was so fucking crazy okay it's so fucking crazy to me that she can have such range because the first time i saw meryl streep in a movie she was playing julia child it was uh julie and julia i think or julie and i'm not sure what it was but it's about this girl who is cooking a ton of julia child's recipes and it's how she's learning to cook and she's writing a blog about it and this is based on a real person and then julia child was a real person who uh, studied how to cook, I think, in France, actually. And um, maybe, I don't remember all the details perfectly. But um, she was amazing. This is like this very, like, um, what was it? She, she's this kind of, like, funny character in it. And, like, she's very, she's always smiling. And she kind of talks like this, you know? Like, it, amazing, amazing. And she did, like, a one-to-one -one depiction. I was like, Meryl Streep! You literally, like, po you were possessed by the fucking ghost of Julia Child to play this role. Excuse me. <laughs> like, it was so crazy. And then, so I, I I had always seen her in kind of roles like that. But then I saw her as the witch in um Into the Woods. I love Into the Woods because I'm a big Sondheim fan. And she was so phenomenal. And seeing her, but it, it's still this really cartoonishly kind of out there role that is like all over the place and very dramatic so for me meryl streep i was like oh she's amazing she's very dramatic um i love her <laughs> she is an icon she is to be protected and then was she was she the fairy godmother in shrek too guys you can't just tell me was she you guys keep saying shrek too was she the fucking fairy godmother i never looked at the cast the cast list I think so, yes. Holy sh- No, that was Jennifer Saunders. Okay. Okay, guys, don't scare me like that. Was she in Shrek 2 as somebody else? The dragon? Eh? Uh, sure, why not? Julie Roberts, Shrek 2 is go to- Guys, stop. I'm just gonna look it up. I can't trust you guys. None of you know the answer. Yeah, she was not in Shrek. Okay. Good. Stop typing things to me. That's a lie, guys. <laughs> Oh, you scared me. Anyway, so then when I when I saw her in Devil Wears Prada, it's such a realistic type character as where like she's not being overly dramatic. I mean, like it's obviously dramatic, like in a different way, though, you know, <laughs> me when I trust information on the Internet. <laughs> Stop trusting chat. Look, I did. I asked. And then people said conflicting things. And then I was going to look it up. 
What do you mean, don't just... I, I'm reading chat actively having a conversation, bro. But, uh, yeah. So, she was very real. She was very realistic. As this, like, really shitty boss. But at the same time... It's so weird because, like, she is a shitty boss, but she also simultaneously isn't a shitty boss. It's so weird to de to describe it. She is someone who just walked in the room and commanded respect. Instantly. Instantly! And she just had that and, like, <laughs> the mannerisms. And that's all. <laughs> oh, it got me. It was so good. Ugh. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. So... I was quite, quite excited. <laughs> I really liked it. But yeah, again, don't really like how the movie ended. Mm. Like, it would have been fine with her leaving the job at the end. Because I got, I got the message with that and I thought that was fine. And I liked the, her getting a different job and then being recommended and being like, she was the most difficult employee I've ever had. Or my biggest failure. If you don't hire her, you're making a mistake, you know? <laughs> like, that was iconic. And then, like, seeing her after she's quit and then, like, going in the car and then, like, smiling to herself. Only to just be like, ah, drive! <laughs> um, but yeah, like, her just, like, getting back together with her shitty boyfriend who was... She, like, again, was she a great partner? No. But was she, like... Like, was he a good partner throughout the whole movie? Not really. Like, I feel like he started being kind of like a mid-shitty partner. And he ended breaking up with her because she had a job that was her priority. And then she got back together with him. Like, honestly, I would have rather her gotten together with the other guy than have gotten back together with him. And I didn't like him either. <laughs> I didn't like him either. Like, I thought both of them were meh, you know? But, yeah. Sonic Master, thank you very much for the pinky. Uh, it's great to watch your streams. I do my best to get your streams as much as possible. About two weeks ago, I had my birthday! <gasps> Can I ask for a belated birthday? If possible, keep up the good work. Of course, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Imagine if she stayed single. That would have been a power move too. I would have been down for that also. I would have been down. But like, okay, wait. The thing that made it worse to me was when she was talking to her friend at the art gallery after that guy kissed her. Um, and like she saw. And she was like, the, the Emily I knew. Or like, what was her name? I don't remember if her name was Emily. Or if I'm just thinking Emily because Emily Blunt was there. <laughs> in the movie but she's like the the girl i knew was madly in love with nate i think her boyfriend's name was and i was just sitting there and i was like okay but the guy that we saw and the guy that we saw was literally okay andy okay andy because she's Anne hathaway <laughs> andy and emily played by Anne. Emily Blunt. Understood. Okay, yeah. Like, the Andy I knew loved Nate more than anything. And I was just like, why though? Because the, the him we saw at the beginning of the movie really wasn't a great partner either. Like, honestly, I don't remember 100%, but I feel like, I feel like her friends were also kind of mean to her at the beginning of the movie. So I'm just kind of like, confused, you know? <laughs> like, I'm like, this poor girl, like, she gets a job. Where she feels like she's, like, she has to work hard, but she really, like, starts to, like, fit in, like, really well, like, I feel like, and, like, really find her place. Yeah, they all liked when she was a doormat. Exactly! That's what's bugging me about it! <laughs> exactly! Exactly! They, when she was a doormat, was really quiet and just kind of there and, like, being the, like, oh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I just really want to be a writer. I, like, they were, like, not really, like, there. And then she becomes more assertive. She starts, like, working on things. And, like, she really, like, is, like, improving in different areas. We're talking about the Devil Wars Prada. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then, like, she's finding, like, some agency. And then they're, like, you're not the person you used to be. And I'm, like, you guys seemed like shitty friends at the beginning. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Sounds like nobody's the good uh, that good except the heroine. I mean, I thought... I really liked Emily Blunt's character. She was a bitch, but, like, you could see why. Uh, you could see why pretty much everyone at the jo that job would hate Andy. Because, as I said, I mean, think of it in reverse. Let's pretend that that job is Hololive for some reason, okay? It's not, obviously, and it's very, very different here. But imagine if someone walked into Hololive and they're like, Oh, yeah, I actually don't really want to work at Hololive. I, I actually want to do this other thing, but this would look really good on my resume. <laughs> and then they got a job and suddenly, despite not knowing what they're doing, complaining about everything and not trying, like still being the boss's favorite at a point, like, wouldn't you guys also be like, huh? <laughs> Like, you know, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure someone, I, I'm pretty sure internally, like, people will probably be like, huh? Like, are you, are you serious? Like, this person isn't even interested in us, you know? But like, you know, like, I, I can understand why everyone in that job didn't like Andy. <laughs> until later, until later. Because she, she, she proved herself. She learned. She she got through and she really Yeah, Nigel called her out on it. He was like, you know how many people would kill to be here? And you're sitting here bitching and moaning to me. Like there's literally people who would kill to have your position right now. <laughs> so it's like Yeah, it's 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 literally she caused such a big problem because she just wasn't good at her job and she didn't want to be there. And again, it's not that the job was hard unnecessarily. There's a reason it is. It still sucks. But, like, there's people who would be happy to do that job. <laughs> and would actually want want that job. Not just be happy to do it, but would want actively to work there, you know? Is a point that I'm trying to make. <laughs> Fun fact, there's always people like that at any other job. I mean, I'm sure there is. So... It, it's kind of interesting then seeing the movie from Andy's perspective because you do sympathize with her because you're like, oh my god, yeah, she's working this job and it's so hard. But yeah, it's it's so interesting to me. <laughs> it's a complicated matter. But it's it's one of the things that I think was right that they... I mean, obviously, I feel like the movie had to be from Andy's perspective be, because of that reason. You know, because like, is she yeah, I am talking about Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> you know, you have her, she comes in, she doesn't care about this job. She slowly starts to care about it and really get integrated in the world. And then she realizes later, she's like, uh, this isn't what I want because it's too cutthroat. <laughs> and then she moves on with her life and goes and does what she wants. But she gains everyone's respect in, in, in the, in the, what is, in the mean, in, in the meantime. That's not correct, but <laughs> the book is based is based almost from the perspective of Anna Wintour. I don't know who Anna Wintour is, but now I'm gonna have to look it up. Devil Wears Prada watch along? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I really liked it though, but again, I just felt like the ending. The ending got me a little bit. <sighs> Vogue's editor. Oh, I see. Fashion Mogul. Legend. Oh, nice. I bet Fuomoko has never seen it. I bet. And now I've seen it. But previously, I was in the same boat and had never seen it. So I can't be too judgmental that they hadn't seen it, you know? La La Land. I've never seen La La Land. What is it about? Please tell me. Is it a good movie? I think it's a musical, isn't it? <laughs> Ryan Gosling's in it! I hate La La Land. <laughs> La La Land fashion, we're winning La La Land bros! Oh my god, what is it about La La Land? Eh? I, I've heard of La La Land. And I should watch it at some point. But I don't know why. I think I saw a clip from it and it just didn't really appeal to me. But I it could have just been a bad clip from it too. I, I don't know. Recently, 
Did you guys ever... I never got to see a movie I wanted to see. I really wanted to see Priscilla, that new movie that had to do with, like, Elvis. Because it had that one actor, Jacob whoever, from Euphoria. And I really wanted to watch it because I was like, I can't imagine him being anything other than the character he was in Euphoria. So, like, I need to see him try to play Elvis. Jacob Elordi, yeah. <laughs> Tall man. Tall as fuck, yeah. So I really, I really wanted to see it, but I don't know if it's still in theaters and I didn't get to. <laughs> How about Greece? Okay, we're not talking about Greece in this household because I actually hate Greece. I don't think the music's bad. I think the music in Greece in, is fantastic, but I hate the story. <laughs> I hate the story. I... I hate the ending. It's a, it's another one where like I love how it starts. Summer days drifting away. You know, like and there's some really really good parts of Greece, but I feel like when Sandy changes the whole person that she is, completely changes herself. Like he was not great. And then, and then she changes herself from being, like, just the person that she is to, like, appeal to this guy who honestly needed to get his act together. Like, yeah, I liked her before the changing, too. Like, I thought she was just fine, and meanwhile, her friends are hating on her. Oh, she doesn't smoke. She's a virgin. <laughs> Sandy, you're so, <laughs> you know, like, all this stuff. And then meanwhile, like... She's just sticking to her guns because that's what she likes. She's doing things that she likes. And then he changed too, though. He he was. He's like, I'm, I'm going to be a different man. And then he saw her like that. He immediately threw the cardigan off. That man's not changing. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. I haven't seen The Breakfast Club. But yeah, for me, it was jarring. Sandy actually died? Huh? Wait, don't say... Don't give me weird theories like that. I'll cry. I'll cry hard. Uh, she didn't need to change for Danny, if anything. Yeah, I mean, that's the issue. Because, like, you think of the... And it's, it's, I don't think it's the opening song. Maybe it is. But the uh, Summer Days Drifting Away song. That one. She's literally... You know that she is telling the truth about what happened while they hung out during the summer. And meanwhile, he's completely lying to his friends to try and sound like things happened that didn't to brag. <laughs> Is that not the opening song? I don't know. I haven't seen Grease in a really long time. But Danny did try out for sports and did better in his academics. They're graduating. Try out for sports and do better in academics. It's your last year. <laughs> We see them graduate by the end of the movie. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the... Okay, that is the opening song. Good. He lettered in track. I'm, ju I'm just saying. Better late, better late than never is very true. But all I'm saying is... He, he could have done a lot more... But he saw when Sandy changed, again, he threw the cardigan off, which tells me everything. Symbolism. It's a musical, so we gotta keep in mind the symbolism of everything. Him wearing the cardigan was the the the, the proof, quote-unquote, that he, in musical language, was uh, going to change for real. He, he was going to change. He was going to evolve. He was going to become a little bit different because he needed to change. But his underclothes were the same, was the same kind of sexy stuff we've seen him wearing the whole movie. So when we see Sandy suddenly also come out in all, in all black and uh, looking completely different, he has no transgressions and instead throws away the cardigan suddenly looking the way he did the whole movie. She changed for him. He was not going to continue to change. <laughs> it wasn't a permanent cardigan. It was surface level. Yeah. It's not like he was wearing khakis, you know? <laughs> Is there going to be a test on this? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, look, this is just my opinion, though. Again, music in Greece, really good. 
The music in Greece is phenomenal, but I just personally am not a big fan. <laughs> oh, you know, I also watched Shakespeare in Love. I watched it on the plane. I love that movie. I love Shakespeare in Love. I found out apparently that the actor who played Shakespeare in that movie was apparently fucking Voldemort. And I was very confused because I was like, oh my god, he's so attractive. He's so good. This Shakespeare. Oh my god. <laughs> and then <laughs> someone was like, you know, that's Voldemort, right? And I was like, no, it's not. I'm not looking up the actors to find out if you're right or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's his brother. I don't know if it is, but I'm sad either way. Never saw it? You should. It's a romance movie. It's about Shakespeare. And it's about him writing Romeo and Juliet. And the struggle he goes through until he finds his muse, who is Viola, played by a young Gwyneth Paltrow. And, uh... Oh, Shakespeare is Joseph. Okay, good. Someone lied to me then. Apparently. And by someone, I mean my sister. <laughs> my sister lied to me. Aradia. I'll just look it up later. Check out Grand Budapest Hotel. I really want to watch that movie. I've never seen it before, but I saw one clip and it killed me. Oh, but anyways, so... um. It's such a good movie because it, it's literally the plot. It's literally the plot of uh, Romeo and Juliet. Except, again, it's Shakespeare writing this musical... Uh, or not a musical, excuse me. Writing this play regarding his life and his affair that he is having with Viola, who's to be married and sent to America. So it's his very sad love story. And then at the end, uh, obviously her name's Viola, which is the name of one of the characters in another of Shakespeare's plays. Uh, they, as she's leaving, have he uses her leaving in this little fantasy they quickly dream up as the inspiration for his next play. <laughs> not, Amer not America! Not Virginia! But yeah, it's, it's a good movie. <laughs> Not Macbeth. <laughs> guys. I used to... Guys, I used to be such a, such a Shakespeare girly. It was actually embarrassing. I really, genuinely, like, I rented the complete works of Shakespeare from the library. And with all my other school books, I would walk around with it. As if, like... I don't know. I thought it made me... I didn't think it made me special. But, like, I was, like, really obsessed. I had, at one point... Um, Juliet's monologue memorized the uh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not be but sworn thy love, and I will no longer be a cat. Like that whole entire thing, I had memorized it, and I would use it every single time I needed to audition and use a monologue for a theater. <laughs> I would come in with Juliet's monologue and be fucking annoying. Oh my god, and like. I remember, because I babysat when I was younger, too, I'd have Hamlet, and I would I would read it after all the kids went to sleep. And I was like, yes, I can feel his pain and suffering. I just, yeah, I was kind of a nerd. Once I finally stopped wearing glasses, it just suddenly all the nerd flew out of my body, and I stopped being so obsessed with Shakespeare. But while I was actively wearing glasses, I was such a Shakespeare kid. <laughs> But you also have to keep in mind, I was also literally in, um, like, advanced English and stuff. So, like, um, I really liked to read at one point in my life. <laughs> Until I stopped wearing glasses. <laughs> Chuni arc. Excuse me? A, a Shakespeare Chuni? <laughs> We got an AP nerd. Well, you know, the funniest thing, I think I've talked about this. So if you wanted to be able to do AP English, you had to be in advanced English classes up until your senior year uh, at my school. So um, the year before, I always got A's. Always got A's. Never had an issue. I was in the advanced class. 
and I, I always did fantastic. Then the year before AP, I got a teacher who was literally known for being really uh, difficult. Like just having an overly difficult class where even like the best students would just fuck up, you know? Um, and so I guess I just wasn't good enough. He, he just didn't like my writing style. So we do papers and I'd always get like pretty bad grades, even though like the papers were fine and like it sucked. And then, so because of that, I, I still passed, but not like with a high enough score to be able to do the AP program. And so it was so funny because then the next year I was like, okay, well, I still want to do, uh, a, you know, an English type class. So I ended up taking creative writing so I could learn more about poetry because uh, I really wanted to write poetry because I liked writing lyrics. So I took, um, I took uh, that. And it's so funny because... I had the AP teacher. The AP teacher was legitimately teaching <laughs> the creative writing class. And I'd always get my assignments in super early. He'd always grade me super highly. And he asked me at one point, he was like, why aren't you in the AP class? I feel like you'd be a really good fit. Why, why didn't you decide to do that? And I was like, because I literally couldn't because of uh, the year before this teacher did did this. And he was like, why <laughs> he was so confused he was like you should you should be in in the ap class it seems like it would have been a really good fit for you you clearly are really passionate like about like writing and stuff like eh, yeah so i'm being Risa is suffering but it, exactly it was vindication because he was just like, you're just, you're, you're really good at this. And he always graded me really, really highly. He always liked everything I turned in. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah sometimes it feels like teachers who do that take out their frustrations on students. I feel they, the same way. Like, I feel like they feel like they have to have, I feel like they know that they're the, the like border that like you have to pass to be able to get into those classes. And I feel like that gives them a bit of a superiority complex sometimes and feeling like, it's their way or the highway even in things that like really don't matter and they have a bit of a a power you know <laughs> yeah a power trip not the creative writing teacher being like my favorite needs to be in the same class <laughs> i i was the favorite it it was so funny though because one time um he got he got a poem with no name on it, but it was also well written, and I hadn't turned mine in yet. So he's like, "Was this one yours?" And I was like, "No." Well, okay, wait. It's also because I wrote every single one of my poems about the moon, um, and this this one was also about a moon. So he was like, "This is probably hers," but it's also well written, so it's also probably hers. And I was like, "I'm not done with my assignment yet. I'm sorry." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh," <laughs> but they didn't put their name on it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I liked I like to write about the moon because it made me feel inspired. Maybe I'll try to dig up one of my old poems sometime and read it to you. Maybe not though. Actually, that seems embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no name, no credit. No, he was super nice. He put it. Um, he wasn't one of those teachers. Even though he was like an AP teacher, he put it up on the th on the thing so everyone could see it. Uh, on the whiteboard and was like would would let everyone know and he was like hey whoever's this is by the way you didn't put a name on it <laughs> yeah do it no I might have deleted them but I'm not sure do, 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 do. me not properly hum humming along with my background music even though I'm listening to it <laughs> Reen released a game she made in high school I did see that but I don't want to release my poems you know, like that's that's like embarrassing. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah. Anyway, though, uh, I think this is a good place to call it today. <laughs> Sorry uh, for talking about lots of uh, random things. Also, ah, thank you very much for the pinky. Can you please sing y'all poems? No. <laughs> I'll sing lyrical poetry that I write. Because that's what lyrics are. They're lyrical poetry. Don't leave us. No, I'm running away. 
You guys are going to have to go and be sad without me. <laughs> Let's quick see if anyone else is streaming. They're probably not because of the time zone right now, but we'll still look anyway. Anybody? Anybody? Ah! Um, so no one in Hololive is streaming. Um, you know, it's so weird for me because YouTube is not Twitch. So it feels weird to do things the way that Twitch would do them and uh, raid into someone. Because I have some people on here who are not Hololive that I could raid into. <laughs> But somehow that feels wrong. I know Coyote is streaming you guys, but um, you have to, you have to, it has to be two way. Uh, she has to click something for me to be able to send into her. Um, I literally cannot raid into her because she doesn't have that. Otherwise, I would one hundred percent raid in to to Coyote. I I literally I I have a list. It pulls up everyone, so I can see I can see who is live. Um and she she's not on she's not on my thing which means i physically i could put in the link and everything but i physically do not have perms to raid into her you know what i mean manual raid time if only um people are saying that shiori is doing a twitter space so <laughs> just because i'm too nervous to raid into someone who's not hollow live maybe maybe someday maybe someday we're gonna go ahead and raid into my bestie shiori <laughs> my girlfriend my wife my queen um it's it's an open chat it's going to be a twitter space so for those of you who are going to go over there um uh, please do keep an eye on it and um open up the twitter link so you can actually hear what she's saying but in the meantime <laughs> thank you guys for coming out i know this stream was at a very different time than i usually stream at but regardless i had tons of fun with you guys so i hope you guys also had fun and I will look forward to seeing you all, uh, not tomorrow. When do I see you again? Uh, on the 25th. We are actually going to be starting around the same time that this stream started. Maybe a little later, we'll see. I might start an hour or two earlier. No, later, not earlier. Um, but we're going to be streaming Stardew Valley. I have the urge to play, so we're going to do it. <laughs> so I'll look forward to seeing you all there. But for now, have a great day and bye, darlings.